skis. And uh, poor Chris is having some trouble with the internet here, so bear with us a little bit if you can. Um, and uh, we're doing the best we can. Steal there, turnover by Seaman. Missed on the layup there. Rebound assumption. Another miss. Another rebound for Davenport assumption for two. Finally getting on the board. Seaman had a turnover there. The Davenport assumption team's playing pretty tenacious defense here, uh, getting in our girls' face. Um, Aaron pass there by Lerma. Seaman wasn't ready for it. So we'll set up in our press again. Assumption, er, uh, Muscatine got out to a 5 to nothing lead. Davenport's kind of settled down a little bit here. Come up and get the ball there, Watts. Nice job pressuring the ball, getting in, and uh, Assumption led her too far a little bit on the pass, so it'll be a turnover, Musky ball. Seaman to inbounds to Lerma. Looks Way back to Seaman, and it's tipped pass off Davenport Assumption. Good look there, but uh, good defense by Assumption to get their hands up and tip that away. Lerma to inbounds this time. Back out to Zillig. Dribbles around the key. Takes a little floater, can't get it to fall. Rebound Davenport Assumption. Nice pass up ahead. Good vision there. Four to five game now. Watson bringing it up. Definitely trying to force Watson to her left, and she should feel pretty comfortable there. Reno dribbles off three. She's stroking. I mean, she. that's a carryover from last week's game. Uh, I think her confidence is back from the way that looks because she didn't um, even look at another player. She just took a side dribble and uh, said, I'm going to take this three and made it go. So Reno is, I think, got her confidence back. And that is a deal breaker for assumption. Yeah. If, if she, that's just another dimension that we add. Nice little pass underneath there for assumption, making it eight to six now. I mean, it was almost a, I mean, I, I, I know I'm, this is kind of a crazy comparison, but it was almost like a Caitlin Clark, I'm going to shoot this. You know what I mean? It was, you know, it's a crazy uh, comparison because obviously nothing against Mace, but, I mean, she's not Caitlin, but that's the same thing Caitlin would do is just kind of dribble off and get open and take a shot. So five-second violation there. Now are we saying we got a timeout in before the five-second? Yeah, I think we did get a timeout in. Uh, Davenport did get a timeout in before the five-second violation. So, quick 30, 30 uh, timeout here. Watson with her first points of the night. Underneath. Muskies with a 10-6 lead with 440 left here in the first quarter. Got to give a shout-out to... Uh, Dan and Kelly Timmons, I got a chance to go down and say hi to them from Davenport. Uh, really nice people. I'm sorry, uh, Muskie fans, but <laughs> I've known them for about five years now. Um, played softball with their daughter, and my daughter played on the same teams. Really good people. Um, got a chance to say hi, and uh, they were happy to see me too, so that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> but here back at the game, uh, Muskies... Ahead 10-6, uh, Davenport will inbounds here, and Muskie's in their full court press here. Need to, good job there by Watson to come up. Underneath, missing, we gotta get a better, we gotta do a little bit better job rebounding, guys. Possible three, Zillig tips it out. I thought it was off Zillig there, so we might have got one, but got a substitution for Davenport. And Lerma will inbound to Watson. Seaman to Lerma. Mishandled the pass a little bit. Otherwise, I think she had a shot there. Zillig, long three. In and out. Rebound to Assumption. We're just getting killed on the boards, guys.
Watson doing her thing, pestering. Good little backdoor cut there by Assumption. Dribble penetration in. Can't get the roll, and we're going to have it off Zillig. She's got to go up strong and come down strong. Ten six game with three forty here left in the first quarter. Long three there by Davenport missed. So this time Seaman will inbound it. It was a good look. I mean, for Davenport there, just a little bit too strong. Seaman and uh, Watson. As Chris calls her the glove. Over to Zillig. Looks at another three. Over to Lerma. Dribble penetration. And we're going to pick up a foul there. At the first foul of the game. We're three minutes in, and that's the first, you know, I mean, got three minutes left, I mean, and uh, that's the first foul called of the day. Of the night, I should say. Lerma inbounding to Seaman. Tried to get the quick pass, but not quite. Good defense there by Davenport to knock it out of bounds. Out to Reno. Thought about a three. Dribbles. Kicks it over to Lerma. Dribbles in. Kicks it back over to Seaman to Watson. Good ball rotation. Got to keep it moving, though. Got to move the ball. Keep moving the ball there, Watson. That's okay. They were doing really good moving the ball around, and then Watson kind of hesitated a little bit like she wanted to take a shot. But um, I think there, if you just keep passing the ball around there, you might find an open shooter on the other side. Watson. Cutter through the middle. Nice job, Zillig there. Nice transition defense for Zillig to get back and knock that ball down. Otherwise, that's an easy two-point bucket for Davenport. Oh, underneath. Rebound, Zillig. Finally, we get one. There you go. Lerma. Thought about dribble penetrating in. Decides otherwise. Out to Reno. Long three. Off the back of the rim. Defense. Got to play defense here. Got to play defense. Transition defense is really good for the Muskies. That's one thing I like about these girls. They get back fast. They do a good job of it. Short on the three. Rebound. Lerma. Zillig dribbles all the way in, takes it up, rebound, Seaman, doesn't get the roll, and then an Aaron pass to Lerma, miscommunication there, it'll be uh, Davenport ball on the side here, Assumption, trailing 6-10 to 10 to the Muskies, and we're down to about two minutes left in the first quarter. Nice job there by Zillig to get that pass and then keep great defense up. We're getting down to the clock violation. Reno gets the ball, and uh, Watson on a loose ball gets bumped but keeps right on going. Seaman oh. traveled. Got her feet shuffling just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And, and you know what's crazy is, to me, we're a minute 30 in. You know, a minute 30 left in the first and we got a 10 to 6 lead and Seaman has zero points. That's definitely unusual. Yes. You know, and, and for us to still have a four point lead, I like that. You know, um, that's a good thing. Obviously, the girls have been scouting our girls because really, Seaman hasn't even really had a good look. 
I mean, so they're playing really good defense against us. There's Reno with a steal. Going back the other way. Because it's a Lerma. I mean, every pass is contested. Reno for three. Holy cow, where did this girl come from? I mean, like, I know where she's been. But <laughs> right. <laughs> nice. This is the Macy Reno we're used to seeing. Yes. And to be quite honest, we're going to need down the stretch. Exactly. Nice pass there. N rebound. Watson. With the glove. The little glove. Up ahead to Zillig, who thought about a three. Thought about dribble penetrating. Steps a step back. That's, is that a three? <laughs> what? What is going on here? I think that was a three. That, uh, we are at 16-6. to six. Muskie's lead. Ooh, turnover. Turnover. Seaman, Seaman on the six. board. Well, nope. 15. Wait, we just went backwards. I'm not quite sure what they're doing on the board here. 17. 17. So it was a two for It must have been a Zillig. two. Yeah. Got a foul on Watson. Her first. Muskies go on a little run right there. 17-6. That's, that's the Muskie team we're used to seeing. Right. Yeah. This is, they started off a little bit slow and, and, and for whatever reason, and uh, now they're starting to play Muskie ball. Good defense here. Fighting through screens. Another motion offense that... Nice dribble. And then we got a foul on Reno. I don't mind that foul there. No. Oh. Definitely make her earn them at the line. Well, especially since we don't have to worry about going into a bonus situation of any sort at right. this point. Exactly. Quick reminder for those just tuning in for the first time this season. The bonus has changed in high school basketball. It's now five, five. per quarter instead of seven and ten per half. Right. Supposedly, it's supposed to speed the game up. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not buying it, but it's all right. Yeah, no. we're down to 22 seconds here left in the first quarter. Muskies 17-6. There they break. I, mean, I suppose technically it probably does. Right. But I don't know if it's by. I mean, what you pick up maybe a minute or two. Yeah, if you maybe. Cut out, if you cut out like two or three trips to the line. And and like, here's the thing on that. I don't know. Um, you know, it's not like. It's not like baseball where we need to speed the game up. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a fast game enough the way it is. It's not like yeah. it's a baseball. Hey, get, we will literally get two full games done with, uh, you know, nice 20-minute break in between. Right. And the time it takes to play one baseball one game. One baseball game. We had a turnover there by Lerma. I thought maybe it should have been a jump ball situation. And that'll do it for the first quarter. Muskies t have a 10-point lead after the first quarter. And uh, looking, they made a nice little spurt there at the end, and I like what I saw. We'll be right back. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. MPW is committed to keeping Muscatine's lights on, water running, and our customers connected to the world. We monitor all utility services day and night to ensure reliability. Whether it's routine system maintenance work or an outage response, our crews work on your behalf. Responsive 24-7, 365, in the field, behind the scenes, around the clock, MPW is always here. I'm proud to be a part of the system control team. I'm Jennifer Phelps, and I am MPW. In the future, more and more of the energy we use will come from renewables. However, the transition to being carbon free is a long journey, taking years of research and trillions of dollars nationwide. Our Power in the Future plan is a balanced approach. It increases sustainability while maintaining reliability and affordable rates for Muscatine. Okay, folks, here we are back to start the second quarter. Davenport assumption with the ball. Muskie's back with the same five starters. Steal by Seaman. 
She's going to try to take it coast to coast. Takes it up. All ball. That was really good defense right there, guys. I mean, that, that happens one in every ten times that that happens. Yeah. You, you get a breakaway like that. And we got a Aaron pass off. Ooh, I thought that was off Zillig, but we'll take it. So a steal by Seaman. Davenport still playing really. Zillig tried to oh. hit the fadeaway there. Rebound. Lerma kicks it out to Seaman. Nice pass. Thought about a three. Kicks it over to Reno, and she'll take it. That's short. Good rebound by Seaman. And she goes up and gets fouled. You know, I told her earlier in the year, I want to see her get mad and get aggressive down there. And she's starting to do it. I like it. She's under there banging and trying to get the board. And, and, and that's where I want to see more of that out of her. Get down there and get mad. I said, don't get fouled. You know, you know, don't get mean. Just get mad. Right. You know? You know, like, what is it, Pacheco, you know, they say that he runs like he's, you know, mad at the ground. Right. You know, that same kind of a concept. Right. Watson up ahead to Lerma. Nice fake. Nice fake. And the one. Really nice move there by Lerma. You know, and that Euro step is so dangerous. It is. Now that, you know, when people have learned how to gather right. and on that step where, you, you know, and what's what's so weird is like, uh, and I know I talk about uh, my son and his team that plays a lot, but, you know, they were at a tournament this weekend. There was one ref who deemed that a Euro step was a travel. Okay. Right? And so if you've got kids that are used to being able to do that, right. all of a sudden they're getting called for a travel and you're, you're looking at it like, what is that? <laughs> and it's like, well, back in the olden days, yeah, that, that used was, to be a travel. That used to be a travel. And and you can tell, you know, and it's like, dude, okay, you're just going to have to put that in the bag for tonight. Yep. Because it, it's just, you're going to, I mean, at this level, no offense to your son, but at that younger age, you're going to see more officials like that maybe than you oh, will, yeah. oh, at, than it will at like a high school game. Oh, yeah. And that's... You're just there. Oh. Another good job there by Reno. Assumption cut into the lead a little bit here. And, you know, I do have to give a shout out to... Uh, nice steal. Nice Zillig, way to step in front of that. Give a shout out to uh, local referee extraordinaire uh, Kevin Lloyd. Yep. Because of his explanation to me about the correctable error made on the jump ball. Watson could get the three to fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was able to apply that same logic over the weekend and fix a near travesty in a sixth grade game. A sixth three game. A sixth grade game. Well, oh, Seaman drives all the way oh, in oh, and what she's going to draw all the. Uh, no, no no charge travel. or block. Uh, that was either way, uh, I could have seen that called either way. It almost looks like I kind of bumped into each other. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. And, I'm, not, and I'm not. That's what caused the travel was they bumped into each other. But yeah, well, you know. Yeah, I would have definitely called a foul one way or the other there. But Davenport, Assumption stepped on the line. Good defense there. Looks like Seaman will inbounds here. Muskies lead 22-11, about six minutes left in the second. Let's see, we've got Watson, Lerma, Seaman, Zillig, and... Reno. Reno, as I say, couldn't see her down in the corner. Zillig takes it in. Uh, couldn't get it to fall. That's must uh, off Zillig, evidently. I thought it was off number 31 there for Davenport, but... Well, you were wrong. I was wrong. I'm, I've, I've been wrong a time or two. Huh. huh. What's that like? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. We have fun up here, guys, if you haven't figured that much out yet. You know, and if any of you have ever wondered why we sit the way we do up here, you know, when you look at us, <laughs> Toby is on my left. Okay? Today. There, there's a reason. Well, but there's a reason. When I can't hear out of my left ear, that's I true. put Toby on my left. There you go. Because that's just where you want him. Yeah. Right? Like, where you can't hear him. Reno yeah. missing the long three. Back the other way. 
Ooh, they missed an outlet pass there. Ooh, Good. Lerma with some great defense. Travel. Or did we get a timeout? We got the timeout. We got the timeout. I, I will say this. For the moment, uh, the way Lerma was standing over her, it almost looked like she was going to, like, <laughs> like pound her. Like, I mean, obviously, she wasn't, folks. I, right. I don't mean that, but just, like. Five minutes left till halftime. Uh, scrappy game going on here, guys. Uh, you know, both teams are scrapping hard. Um, you know, contesting passes, contesting, you know, dribble penetration. Uh, some really good things on both sides uh, for the Muskies, defensively and offensively. Yeah, and, and what I like here is the girls are playing with confidence, mm -hmm. especially, and I mean, I know we mentioned this, but, you know, Macy Reno uh, tonight looks like, and, and this has been coming. This isn't just right. like it turned on tonight. Right. But tonight she looks like a different player than she did the first three weeks of the season. Exactly. And I, and I think that really the, the game against North – you know, and maybe the game before that really got her believing, you know, because she started to, you know, get some shots to fall. And, and now, as you can tell, she's just, she's not even concerned. She's just going to put it up and it's going to go. Zillig underneath picking up a foul. Staying with her. Good defense under there, really. I mean, I guess the only thing she could have done was stand straight up. I believe that's her first. Yeah. Yep. So. But it was a shooting foul, so 22 to 12. Still hold that 10-point lead. Let's see if we can be, add a couple extra points onto that 10-point lead before halftime. Second one does fall. Wow. I don't know. I mean, those were... Those were right. Yeah, I mean, those were. Those are some rock solid free throws. Yeah, <laughs> don't want to foul her for future reference. No, <laughs> no. Inbounding Zillig to Watson, who brings it up the left side. Thought about a pass to Seaman, and does Whoa. get it to her. Uh, thought about a bounce back into Cutter Lerma, dribble penetrating out to Seaman. Ooh, got away with it. Yep. Nope. They called it. Almost. And that's and honestly, that's just that pesky defense that Davenport's playing. I mean, they're kind of frustrating them a little bit, you know, on their passes and they're contesting everything. So two Which is very, normally what we do. Yeah, exactly. Two very similar teams, uh, how they're coached and played. Nice. There you go, Seaman. That was off Seaman. But good step in front of that pass and uh, take away the easy two there. So once again, that's just good defense. Underneath. Rebound, Seaman. Up ahead to Reno. No. Oh. I almost, you know, I didn't like it, but then I thought, okay, you know what, go shoot it because there really wasn't anybody there to rebound, but um, when you have that good of a look, you got to take it, I guess. Watson falls, playing defense, just incidental contact there, I think. Down to four minutes left and 22-15 lead. And Watson dribbles off her leg, and that'll be a turnover to the uh, Assumption Knights. Inbounds. We pull off the press a little bit there. Get back. And still playing straight man, it looks like. Inside. Oh, get her, Watts. Well, you know, they experimented with that zone, that 2-3 zone last year, and I don't know that the girls ever really got comfortable, comfortable. with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -mm. I, don't I, know I agree. It's just the style of players they are. Well, they're all athletes. I mean, every one of those girls out there right now is a really good all-around athlete. I mean, they play multiple sports. They do multiple things. Rebound, Zillig, outlet to Lerma. Nothing there, so she pulls it back. Good job, Reno. Over to Watson. 
Back to Zillig for a three. Yes! Big three there by Zillig. Gets it back up to a 10-point lead for the Muskies. And she walked, didn't she? Yeah, she took an extra step. A couple quick steps, and here we go. Muskie ball. Watson bringing it up the left-hand side. And nothing there underneath. So she'll dribble in and try to take it up and get blocked. Nice. Uh, up ahead. That was a very nice pass. That yeah. pass is a lot harder than you think, folks. Over the head pass like that, and she was able to collect herself and put the two in. And just and just to leave it right there where it needed to be right. so they can catch it at full steam. Watson dribbles in and gets blocked, but going to pick up a body foul, I think. Um, he called a hack on that, but that was a body foul. Um, she was all ball, <laughs> but just got her with her body. Watson will go to the line for two. First one, he gets the shooter roll. <laughs> uh, Shooter's touch there. It's kind of like the membership bounce at a golf club, in you know, a golf course. You get that member's bounce. Yeah. <laughs> Taryn, second one up, off the back of the rim, not quite there. Rebound assumption. Muskies lead 26 to 17. Two minutes left in the first half. Underneath, Zillig. Ooh, ooh. You, you, she knew it right away. Yep. That's her second. Incoming Shaw. Yep. For Zillig, picking up her second. Shaw. Coming in for Zilling. Taller girl that can definitely extend the court by shooting some threes. It's and has a tremendous shoe game, we might add. Yes. The wearing the white ones tonight. It looks no like no inches tonight. White with green, is that what they are tonight? Uh, it appears to be, yes. Yes. Thought about a three. Oh. Whoop. Lerma went in when she thought she was going to go out and lay up on the other now end. This is a spot I was just going to say I'd love to see Coach Jones pop a quick timeout here, get the girls calmed down before. You right. know, and this is something that you hope coaches do is, you know, get to these before they become a problem. Right. Right. You know, you've, you've kind of squandered, uh, you know, a Ten. little bit of your 10, 12 point, point lead. lead. You know, and you just don't want it to get out of hand. Right. And you can't, I, unless Matt's changed policies, you can't spend a timeout at hy tomorrow. Right. At the end of the game. Either. When the game's over. And the last two minutes of the half is critical. You know, the yes. last thing you want to do is have had a 10-point Give up some of it. Go into the locker room deflated. Deflated, right? You know that that's a that's a big thing, especially when assumptions already used enough. They're down to three timeouts left, so right. It's not like they're gonna have all five left at the end to control the game. Uh, once again, a little miscommunication there between the girls. Uh, Watson was expecting something, and uh, I believe she's expecting Seaman to look back and. And, and the seaman was expecting her to lead her, maybe. And uh, and Lerma. Whew. Lerma is... I, gee, many Christmas. I would not want her guarding me. No. Gosh, no. Little dribble penetration in. Misses the bunny. Gets her own rebound. And kicks it back out. Somehow, you know... That. Shawl down underneath. Skip pass out to the side. There's some banging going on down underneath. I like it. Long three, front of the rim. Rebound, assumption. Fresh shot clock. They're not going to need it. That's oh, over and back. Yep, over and back. There we go. 
And that right there, folks, is why rebounding matters. Exactly. I mean, we second, third, fourth chances are killers. Yep. And they, and fortunately for us, they did not, they did not score off of them. Um, so we're down Z- to a minute twelve left. Zillick checks back in. Muskie's clinging now to a four point lead. Watson over to Reno. Inside oh, contested half a pass. step late. Yep, just a half a step. And and in that situation, I don't know, Chris, do you try to get a bounce pass in there instead of an I you just gotta be quicker with it. Yeah. You Reno for three it. short. That's one of those that cut. I mean, as the person receiving the pass out on the wing there, you've got to be ready to pass it the instant you get it. I think she traveled, didn't she? Yeah, yep. she traveled first. Yeah. Because you've got to be able to put it half a step in front of them on their left side to let them get up there. And if it's not that, it's too late. Yeah. So we're down to 42 seconds, a little bit of differentiation between shot clock and game clock. Muskies need to get two points here, maybe three. Or maybe two, a quick steal, and another yeah. three for yeah. five. Something like that. Seaman with We're the ball drives much. it in. Lays I'll take it that. In. That works really nice. Seaman said, I'll take it. Now we need a steal. We're down to 20 seconds left here. Seaman knocks it down, picks up the steal, and the layup for two. That's huge. Good call there, Chris. Hey, you know, I do what I can. <laughs> Down to eight seconds left. Inside, nice job, Zillig. Way to get in front of that pass. They don't call me the sixth muskie for nothing. I'm <laughs> loving it. Although I honestly don't think I've ever been called that. So <laughs> it's all good. Outlet. Oh, underneath, missing the shot, getting the rebound, and missing again. Um, muskies take the halftime lead, thirty to twenty-two. If I were to say one thing, girls, we need to do a better job of rebounding. And we're being we're getting we're fortunate right now to be ahead by eight, I think, really. Um, with the amount of rebounds that they have gotten. We got it. That's one thing I hope coach focuses on here at halftime for adjustments is you know, we gotta do a better job of rebounding. And honestly, this game could be a lot worse, you know. Oh, it, it, you know, it, definitely. It, you know, so uh on that note, uh, we'll take a break for Well, halftime. actually, we won't take a break okay. because we have the musky dancers, the Palm Ooh. Squad, here to perform. But we can't so play the music. We can't play the music, as always, folks, because as right. you well know, I'm sure people at home can probably quote me word for word on this. If we play the music, we will get kicked off by the YouTube and Facebook police. So we will be here showing the performance um if you'd like i could maybe try and whistle or hum potentially <laughs> but i don't think any of you want to do that so we will again uh kind of kind of talk over the performance okay. uh, for lack of a better term uh but again that's uh just to make sure that we don't get kicked off folks and you know this these girls work really hard on these routines and and um, put in a lot of time and practice, and and it's entertaining. Yes, like let's let's not be like I can't wait to see. So this uh, coming up next Friday, the RDFZ art troops from uh, the high school associated associated with Renmin University in China will be here performing. Oh wow! And they're uh, they're going to have five different troops here, of which the girls dance is one. Okay, uh, which is going to be. Uh, functionally the Chinese version of this. Wow. They, they would be what I would uh, consider comparable um, troops. Okay. And so really looking forward to that. Uh, we're working on some of the details now. Oh, but uh, in the house. Hopefully, Sorry. <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to get uh, these girls and those girls all connected and maybe do a little bit of something together before the performance, but we'll see. We'll see on how that works out. Yeah, that's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, next Friday, the yeah performance has been sold out for a week or two. Uh, it will be out here at the high school, all 636 seats of MHS Auditorium. Wow. Are accounted for. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Uh, pretty pretty big deal. They're, so this troupe actually uh, performs all over the world. Mm-hmm. They're... Um, huh. 
their U.S. tour, so they compete worldwide, but their current U.S. tour, mm -hmm. four cities. Really? In the U.S. And we're one of them. Los Angeles, Minneapolis, Chicago, and Muscatine, Iowa. Wow. Yep. That's the way we roll here in Muscatine, folks. Wow. We bring you the big ones. That's impressive. Yeah, it's actually... So, part of this, uh, you know, obviously there's the the relationship between this community and our sister cities and right. all that. But part of this uh, is also there'll be a luncheon mm -hmm. that day to celebrate the 45th anniversary of U.S. Chinese diplomatic relations. Oh, that's so, cool. You know, like we all talk, you know, do we all love what... I, I'm going to get semi-political here for two <laughs> seconds, <laughs> okay. although it's not going to be bad, I right, swear. Right, right, okay. No matter which side of the aisle you're on, right. I think it's pretty safe to say that at any given time in the last, let's call it 10 to 15 years, you haven't been pleased with our government. Correct. Right? <laughs> but you wouldn't want anybody in a foreign country judging you by your government. Government, right? correct. And so that's what I love about this whole concept of citizen diplomacy that right. has been like a Muscatine hallmark since the 80s. Right. Is, you know what? Our two governments may not be getting along. Right. We may not be doing things they like. Oh, mm. They may throw not. that out right, the window. Right. It, they're still a bunch of human beings. Right, exactly. Right? And so are we. Exactly. And we can appreciate their culture. We can learn right. from them. They can learn from us. Yep. And we can have those dialogues because that's the only way things change. change. It may feel like a big uphill battle. And, you know, it may well be. But, but you know what? That's what we got to do. You can't just sit on your tuchus and, and wait for things to get better. Right. Because they're not. <laughs> yeah. Unless, you know. No. And that's. Unless know. we are open minded and, and you know. Yeah. And, and are willing to adjust to, the, you know, what's out there. and Yeah, I mean, the world changes every day. And, right. And, you know, it gets smaller and smaller in some ways. And, yep. You know, the reality is, you know, we all want the same things. We may go about it differently. Right. Republicans, Democrats, the Chinese, the Americans, the Europeans, we all want a better life for our kids. Right. We all want safety, security. We exactly. all want those things, and I think this is a great way to kind of remind everybody of that. Right. Um, so, you know, I think Sarah Landy said it best. Um, I was reading one of the old interviews she did, and, uh, you know, at one point she said something to the effect, and I apologize for misquoting her, but she basically said she couldn't understand why, uh, you know, the current president was so enamored by them they were just treating him like they would treat everybody else exactly it's you know it's like the very definition of iowa nice right right and you know that's what they did back then and this is the fruits of it so it exactly. just behooves everybody to just you know be nice be nice yeah be nice be nice so we have musky knockout here <laughs> i'm and like okay I said, there's no. The, the student section does have the pink out going, as well as, you know, teachers we have some and, uh, you know, scores, table people. And, you know, we're obviously that's the theme for tonight is pink out. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, I'm not even sure quite how to call this because <laughs> I'm not seeing any... Anybody getting knocked out? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not seeing any dominating. Ugh. We we got a lot of uh, miss rebound in, miss rebound in, and that's you know a lot of ways that's good strategy in knockout, right? Although it doesn't necessarily lead to an exciting game. Like we need somebody to hit a three, right, on the backside, like right there. Yeah. There we go. I don't know who yeah. that was, but now we're getting somewhere. Another possible one that falls, but it didn't. I, and I noticed a lot of slipping and sliding. It What's appears to be. Socks? It appears to be a lack of shoes. <laughs> so I'm not sure, folks. We may need to be... Don't be surprised if sometime in the next week or two you see Discover Muscatine helping run... Oh, airball. Help run a shoe drive for some of these kids. Because <laughs> apparently... <laughs> apparently we... we oh, oh, we've got a little creative uh, defense there by knocking the ball away, then getting tackled. That's... That's a common thing in the knockout that I used to play. <laughs> <laughs> and... We don't even get to see the end of it because it took too long. And the girls so, are back. <laughs> the girls are back. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back in a few minutes for the second half where the Muskies lead 30-22 to 22 over the Davenport Assumption Knights.
Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas, has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated. Call us for your next remodel. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero-turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At MPW, we're excited about the future of Muscatine and our role in supporting the community's growth and prosperity. I've raised my family here, and I'm proud to do impactful work for my neighbors every day. And we're working daily on MPW's Powering the Future plan to ensure we can deliver reliable, affordable, and sustainable services to your homes and businesses for generations to come. I am Jamie Raker, and I am MPW. And we are back for second half action where the Muskies are hosting the Davenport Assumption Lady Knights. They lead 30 22 as we start the third quarter. Yeah, the same five girls. Reno for three off the front of the rim. Rebound Assumption. They actually look like that was a set play for Reno. God, I, Lerma just, her defense is amazing. Another rebound for Assumption underneath. That's, she's out of bounds down there when Zillig knocked it away. Um, playing some good defense there. Seaman will inbound it to Zillig. And Zillig bringing it up the court. I like seeing that's a different look. Nothing like your four bringing it up the court. <laughs> if you feel comfortable with it. <laughs> if you feel comfortable with it, that's cool. Um, she's supporting the pink tonight. Dribble penetration in and foul before the shot on the reach. So it'll be inbounds underneath the basket for the Muskies. It looks like Lirma will be inbounding. Seaman, nice pump fake, dribbles in, took it up strong, got tipped away, just didn't draw the foul. Like I said, they're they're letting the girls play, um, and, and which is perfectly fine. Yep, it's something I have you can adjust no to. No problem. Oh wow, I'm surprised she didn't take that shot. Inside dribble penetration, Euro for layup for two, gets by behind Reno there. Zillig will bring it up again. 30 to 24, Muskies ahead. Zillig dribble penetration, kick over to Seaman. Cross to Watson for three. <laughs> yeah, baby. One, two, three. That's her sixth point of the night. And Watson does, I thought she got a ball there, but <laughs> look at Lair the look on Lerma's face. It was like, ooh, really? <laughs> what? So that's the team's first foul. Oh, they did call that on Lerma. 
underneath. Kind of used her body there to get open there. 33-26 lead here for the Muskies. Watson over to Zillig who pumps on the three. Lerma thought about a three. Kicks it to Seaman. Dribble penetrates in and got swiped away. That'll be musky ball. Like I said, I mean, that it, it's two very similar teams. They're very good on, they're very tenacious on defense. Um, I enjoy these kind of games when you get two very similar teams. And we're going to pick up a foul there on number 22. Looked like a body foul. Oh, she did say on the arm, so team second foul for Davenport. Lerma to inbounds underneath. Long pass out to Watson. Uses her body to shield off the defender there. Zillig will spin move in for two. Nice work by Zillig. Up ahead. Tried to work the pass in underneath. Stolen there by Seaman. Nice backdoor cut. Keep the ball moving. Lerma for three. Get in there. A little bit long. Well, outlet pass. Watson tried to get it. Wow. How did she collect herself and get to make that? With, you know, Watson's hand out there. Thought for sure. That was a pretty good play there by number 22. Backdoor cut by Reno underneath. Tried to throw it up. Good backdoor cut. Seaman trying to get the steal. Skip pass there. Risky pass, but worked for Davenport. Inside. Long three for Davenport off the back of the rim. Rebound. Long rebound. Assumption. Another three. And that one's off. You know, and that, folks, if you're watching at home, that's why you got to put your rumpus in somebody as soon yep. as the shot goes up. Make sure you seal them out because that's, you know, we were talking about rebounding earlier. That's one of those times there's absolutely no reason exactly. the Muskies shouldn't have had that rebound. Exactly. Because um, it was a long rebound right back. and There were three of them on that half of the court. Yep. It's just, it is what it is, but uh, we move on and uh, get better from it and go from there. But was that a must? That was a musky timeout, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. Yep. Quick Both time. teams have three left. So, uh, with four minutes, a little bit over four minutes left in the third quarter, Muskies lead 35 to 28. And uh, don't forget, folks, a little programming note. After this game, there'll be a short break, and then we will follow that up with the boys', boys game. Boys' game this against is a, Assumption. This is the part of the craziness that's going to be the next couple of days of yep. double headers and quadruple headers <laughs> and making up making games. up for <laughs> snow everywhere. Yep. And it's and it's not just here. I mean, oh, no. it's everybody's going to be going through this this next couple of weeks. And Whoa. a little bit too strong. Zilla gets a board. Time out there, kid. Or dribble out of there. And throws it off of her. That'll work. So Zillig did get a rebound there. Seaman has eight points. Yep, that's what I got. And five rebounds. So. Oh, stolen Whoa. off the spin move. Watson getting back. Transition defense. Did about all she could do without picking up a foul. Over to Reno. Out to Zillig for three short. <laughs> Didn't have enough legs for that distance. I just, you know, I mean, she might have pushed it a little bit too. You know, hurried the shot, I should say. Zillig underneath. Another rebound for Assumption. And there's that rebound. 35-32 game now. Oop. Aaron pass. Now, you know, as put together and tight as the girls were playing the first 
eight minutes of this. Right. And we're kind of seeing the inverse here to start the second half. And nice steal well, by uh, Reno. You. See, now I say that, and then Reno comes up with that, so we're good. Yep. Ooh, that uh. was a risky pass, but it worked. So uh, underneath, kick out to Reno for three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice kick out pass by Lerma. Assist. Timeout assumption. Timeout assumption with 304. That was a huge okay. three. That, that was, was a, a huge, huge three. So that puts Muskies back up by six. Yep. And, you know, each team starts with five timeouts. Right. Uh, assumptions were in three, only two left. The entire fourth quarter plus three minutes of the third to go. Yep. Hey, I get not. Letting the game get away from you. Not getting letting the game get away from you, but man. I, I sure, man, I, I don't know if I'd like going into the fourth quarter without three. Right. I would really like to go into the fourth quarter w with three, like I, you're I mean, saying. I, I wouldn't mind five, but. Yeah, but, I mean, at least three. In a tight game like this one, you know, that just seems like it's going to go down to the wire. Well, don't they all technically go down to the yeah, wire? Yeah, but some I of mean, them are, some of them are, you know. I know. Gee. Wow, we have the Assumption Boys team has just walked in, and they have some of the most unique warm-ups I think I've ever seen. You'll uh, get to see them in a little bit. Yeah. They remind me of the equivalent <laughs> to what uh, the boys basketball team had when I was here for a little bit. The purple people eaters, we called yep. them, because they were literally all purple. These aren't all red, but uh, they're of equal, uh, let's call it stature. Um, kind of remind me oh. of old school Indiana uh, Indi basketball. Yes, that's actually, I'm guessing yep. that's what they're modeled after. Maybe even a little Globetrotter, Globetrotter yep. vibe. Ooh, another long three there off the front of the rim. And we do get a rebound there. Nice job, Zillig. We get a foul on the other end. What's interesting is all these girls from Assumption are family members. They all have the last name Knights <laughs> <laughs> on their uniform. <laughs> Watson, little dribble penetration floater, a little bit long. And yes, folks, I do know that's not their last name. It was a really pitiful attempt at being funny. It, I, I got it. That's over the back of the board, isn't that? Yeah, I know. Underneath, nice, wow. Nice scoop. Nice scoop nice there. So back down to a four-point game with a little bit over two minutes left. Seaman to Zillig. Picks up her dribble, hits it to Lerma for a long three. And just missing the front got to crash the boards. You've got to crash the boards, especially if you're going to take those long threes. Right. You know, that's the nice thing about taking threes like that is you're going to have long rebounds. There's a three for Davenport Assumption, 37 to 38. And so there, you know, if you're the person shooting it, you can just step around your defender real quick and you're in position. Right, in position. Ooh, nice job by Zillig out to Reno for three, in and out. Assumption rebound, jump ball situation underneath, and that should go to Davenport. So, Knights in. Mm, substitution in there for the Knights. I don't know. I guess I didn't look. I don't know if, uh, I mean, it's a 3A, 5A thing here um, for basketball, but. Ah, uh, against ah. Uh, uh, I don't know if Davenport's ranked or not. Uh, I guess I didn't look. I did, you know, I did not think to either. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they're right there close, but if they're not, um, that's in, and that's an advantage that you know the assumptions that Dewitts um, have always had. They get to play five A ball or four A or whatever, you know, and. Uh, and then they get to go back down. So they're, they're, they've they're they been pushed, right. you, know, you know what I mean, a little bit harder than maybe some of these other 2A, 3A schools have. So it's always been one of their advantages to be in this conference for them. Yeah. 
pass inside. Takes it all the way and does get the roll. That was just a good offensive set for the Assumption Knights. Yep, uh, um, they do take say. a one point lead. Seaman for three, it does get it to fall. Jeez. I love it too. Folks, go three. get your aspirin, get it in you now so you don't have a heart attack as this game goes into the fourth quarter here in about 41 seconds. Muskies do get a turnover there. Get your defibrillators out. <laughs> get, get your, uh, what are you supposed to do, bite on a towel? Yeah, I, bite on I a towel. I don't know, whatever it is. <laughs> Do your stretches, get loosened up, limbered up, be ready for this because I got a feeling it's going to be a inside to Seaman. Dribbles, back out. Watson thought about a three. Zillig from the corner. Oh, rebound Reno. Shoot go. that right there, kid. Oh. Ugh. Good defense there. Look at that. Smothering them. And, you know, they just knew – that's what they were supposed to do. And, you know, that sounds kind of crazy. But, you know, normally your press is going to be off wow. the basket. So ten we're down to 10 nine. seconds left. Watson bringing the ball up. Tie game. Zillig straight to the hole. Oh, oh. Got her own rebound. Up. And the follow right before there the buzzer. <laughs> that gives us a new game. Woo! Going to head into... The final eight minutes with a two-minute musky lead. Wow. A two-minute a two minute musky lead. Two-minute musky lead. I got it. We got it. I've been on multiple time zones. I'm confused. Yeah. Well, so we got a two-point two lead. Two points. Yes, that's that's what you roll with. With uh, eight minutes left. Exciting game. A lot of back and forth. Um, at times, you know, uh, I thought the muskies were going to kind of pull away, but Davenport scrapped their way back and... Uh, with some really good defense and really good rebounding, really. Um, you know, that's how they got him back into the game, and and now we got a game. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this fourth quarter turns out. You know, one thing that I like here is, uh, you know, in, we've mentioned this before, but there's a lot of carryover from the volleyball team here, and there's a lot of that mentality of, you know, they swap assumption yep. here. So they're not scared of them. They right. know how to go play. They know how to finish. Um, you know, they did that several times throughout. So they understand the psychology of what it takes to put a team away. So right. we're going to see if they can apply that. So I have what would call a kind of crazy question. I'm going to say not stupid, but <laughs> crazy. We got the ball in the third quarter. How do we get the ball in the fourth? There's a jump in the middle. Okay, there we go. There was a one That's that right. looked, there was yeah. one that looked like it was they were going to call a foul and they called a jump and Seaman step back three a little bit long, a little bit momentum. Look at Reno in there banging for the board. I love it. And then uh, it does go off Davenport underneath, so we will be rebounding underneath or inbounding. getting the ball inbounding underneath. Zillig takes it up. And does get two more by herself. And that was a great job of working to get open by yourself on yep. the inbound. Just, you know, kind of casually take her defender in, pop out, get the ball on their outside hand, and then just take it to the hoop. Nice work there by Zillig. Underneath, and she does get it to fall. Wow. Muskies still lead by two. Watson brings it up. Over to Zillig. Oh, take that. Over to Watson, out to Lerma, who thought about a three into Seaman. Take it all the way, kid. Ah, over to Watson. Oh. Jump ball situation goes to Davenport, so the next one will be ours. I, I, I'm assuming the assumption player had her hand on the ball as she was Is yeah. what they were calling that? I wasn't able to see Well, it I mean, dashboard. and their back was to us, so, yeah. I mean... We need a defensive stand here, girls. Dribble penetration in. Floater. Tie the game up. Yes. 
Zillig, thought about a three, dribbles in. Floater, not there, rebound Reno. Not there, rebound Seaman, there. That's there how you rebound the ball, nice. and look what happens. You, that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. You get those rebounds, and you get those second and third opportunities, and you get you know fouled or a basket falls. Right. They're going to make a mistake. Yep. And that's, you know, a lot of times in high school ball, it's just as much about staying consistent and fundamentally sound until your opponent makes a mistake. Right. Right. And that's, you know, you put a lot of pressure on a defense when you get into second, third, and fourth chances. Right. And just quite frankly, most high school teams, boys, girls, they're not going to be able to maintain the focus to withstand two, three, four offensive possessions functionally in a row. Right. Seaman does make the first. Before there's some sort of mental breakdown, whether it's on a on a switch or whether it's right. you know, whatever it is. Second one does fall for Seaman as well. Muskies lead by two. Six sixteen left. Oh. Helper, helper, helper. Underneath. Step back three. Oh wow. That's a big three. Over to Lerma. Thought about a shot. Dribble penetration in, and she does draw the foul on number 31. On the floor before the shot. Yep. But the one thing I like about that is you're putting them in a position where they have to essentially foul you mm -hmm. or give you a layup, right? Right, because she was going to score a layup right there. I mean, it was great dribble penetration. She saw the lane open up, and she took it. Oh, wow. Zillig. Ugh, can't Ugh. quite get the shooter's touch. Up ahead, another three. Short. Rebound. Seaman there. There you go. Much better. And she had her girl blocked off. Completely sealed off. Yep. Really she good job. She had plenty of time to collect herself as it bounced right. A little front. pick and roll to Lerma Ugh. underneath, but they read that. Got a steal. Watson making her work all the way up. Watson pestering. Inside look, a little another look. Off the glass, rebound Lerma. No hesitation. Up ahead to Seaman, nice crossover. Oh, wow. Nice crossover. And then Muscatine, <laughs> Davenport Assumption doing the, uh, it, I'm you know. I'm stuck, so I'll just throw it off. I'll here. just throw it off your foot. And and that's smart thinking, really. I it, mean, it, it, it is. is good heads up thinking. And uh, And we need a defensive stop right here, guys. Down to 12 seconds on the shot clock. Zillig underneath and doing everything she can, but the basket does fall. So Watson bringing it up. Over to Seaman, who thought about a three. Steps up inside. Ooh. Nothing there. Rebound assumption. Zillig tries to step in front, and if that goes, so help me. I mean, did you see that? She readjusted her shot mid-shot, okay. and Muskies take a timeout here. And uh, I'm assuming it'll be a full. It is. Yeah. According to the one and only Roger Bates. Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. Well, that's right. The boys so, Toby, do the teachers. We're gonna we're gonna treat the fans at home to. Uh oh. Here's folks a quick highlight from. I got to do this. Okay, real quick. This guy six three. Do you see that little number zero right there? Step right up in front of that big guy. Yeah. Makes him give the ball up. Right. We'll take yeah. another quick look at it. Okay. Zero steps out. Wyatt, great job. The whole all the whole team did a great job. 
scares the kid off, right? You've been pestering him all day. But here's the great part. Not 30 seconds later, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah. yeah. 30 seconds later. Next trip down the court. Oop. Oh, I put that. I don't know how to do this, folks. <laughs> Here it is. Zero steps out at him again, forces the turnover. Oh, my goodness. I, I'll be honest. As a dad, folks, I'll be honest. I thought there were a couple times that I might lose him when he stepped <laughs> out in front of that kid. <laughs> well, that's honest. a big kid, man. He, he, no, this is no joke. Uh, and, of course, I did go over to the coach afterwards and make the joke about, can I see his birth certificate? Right. But, kid... Six three, and super nice kid. Right. Super nice kid. Not, I mean, right. Super nice kid. Talked to him for just a, a brief second after the game, but uh, solid five inches taller than me. Built, right. Built. I mean, I, he looked like a gentle giant to be right. to be quite honest. Again, super nice kid, but man, he he dwarfed everybody else on the court. Oh wow. Yeah, because I mean, and what and what grade is that? Is That's that sixth grade? Sixth grade, he's six foot three. My yeah. goodness! And you know, Wyatt, and so Wyatt's on the shorter side, right? He's, I think it's like four seven, four eight, maybe. Right, right. It, but most of the kids are in like the five foot range, right? I mean, so exactly, like, it's still got over most, most of them, them a solid, solid foot. foot. Yeah. Reno going to the line here. First one does go. Would be her tenth point of the night. Second one up and good. Big free throw made Seaman there. Seaman and Ziller are at fifteen and fourteen respectively. Yep. So, you know, your your three. Reno picking up a foul there. Quick foul on the reach. So down by one here with a little bit over three minutes left. We need a stop. We have to have a stop. Seaman setting up defense here. Lerma fighting through a good good job fighting through that screen there. Down underneath, good motion does get it to fall. Lexi Hayes. <laughs> that was close there. The, the ref Lerma. even noticed. He's yep. like, everybody's going to question it. I'm seeing her hand was on the top of the ball. and it, I mean, it was. She didn't right. flip it over and carry it. Uh, off a little bit on the three there. Down by three with two minutes left. She's out of bounds, ain't she? Trying to play good, hard defense there and uh, picking up a foul is Seaman. Fifty-four, fifty-one. Muskies trail. And you know this is a spot where the Muskies live and die by the three. So yep. you know you've got to anticipate that the next time down the court, you've got to imagine that's what they're going to be thinking. Right. Is Seaman first Ooh, one of them? Get it, get it, get it, get it. Out oh, of bounds. Right. That'll be that musky ball. ball. Woo, we needed that. Seaman got in there and got her hand on it. and it, You know, the nice thing is with the five girls on the court, there isn't one of them that I don't feel comfortable with taking that three. No, I agree, 100%. You know, but this is one of those times, you know, you're coming down to the end of the game. If you're going to pop that three, make sure you got your legs under you. Exactly. Right? You can't. Another dribble working around. Lerma oh, for pass. Uh, a little bit long. Seaman fighting Seaman for keeping it. it alive. Zillig, Zillig picks it take up. Take it straight to the hole. Yeah, I was hoping get in there. There's That'll a three. Work for Watson. The freshman One, phenom. One, two, Time three. Timeout by the a, Muskies. A Muskies. This will be a 30-second timeout, I believe. Brand new game. Tied up, 54. And that, I like the timeout because it gives us a chance to set up our press yeah. and maybe get that turnover. Um, I understand it. I mean, it's a huge momentum swing if we can do five points here or six, yep. you know, and, and they're none. Um, if we can get pick up a steal here, that would be absolutely great. Um, so that's what we need. Well, and again, it also, you know, it just having watched according to this season, 
you know she's not just talking about this possession with right. the girls. She's planning like, okay, here's you know the next couple of possessions. If we get up, I want to do this. If we're behind, right. here, you know what I mean. Like, right. you know those things are getting pumped into the girls right now, and it, you know they have been all season. It's right. not like this is new. <laughs> it's not like this is new. Just the right. reminders, like keeping everything fresh, so that. The girls know what to do automatically. Yeah, and their Davenport assumption questioned the referee about the if it was a carry or if she kept her hand on top or what, you know, and and uh, she kept her hand on top is what he said. So inbounds there, get her, get her, get her, get her. Okay. And Reno. I like the soft press. Just yeah. make them work. In make case them work. They make a mistake. Yep. Don't let it, and then just pick her up at the logo and Ooh, Ooh. rebound. We need to get a rebound there. Good ball rotation Stay by down. Davenport. Three off the back rebound. Lerma, Lerma great job. Jump ball. That's ours. And no, no, they no, the foul. I think they got the foul they on got number thirty-one. Yep. I believe that's her Had third. Her it's her third. Yep. I believe. And, you know, you look at the, the scoreboard. Oh, they called it on number 10. That's her first. You got 46 out of the 54 points for Assumption came from have come from three players. Yes. And, and you know, we tend to be that way a little bit. But, but I mean, it's 14-11. Right. 15-9-5. You know, it's yeah. not, not quite that heavy on those three. So. Right. I mean, they are obviously our, our – and that's Ooh. out of bounds off Davenport. And that's when you got to be careful of telegraphing those handoffs. Right. Because even though it seems like it's a really short pass, it's not that hard to sneak a hand in there. Exactly. To Lerma here on the corner. Seaman with the cut. And Ooh. Pass that got away from her. It's just kind of a straight cut. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't like it was a back door they were overplaying. Good screen Ooh. there. That was a good screen. I like the no call. Just got to play defense. Play through it. Keep playing. Yep. Don't worry about cutter across the middle there. Zillig. Zillig on an island. Nice. That's off us, though. Great job, though. Oh, great, good defense. Great job by Zillig. I mean, yep. she was all alone there. There was... Nobody else on that side of the court with those two girls. No, nope, and, and Zillig stepped up with defense there, made her really work for that shot, and, and it, it, didn't and it fall. wasn't a good shot. No. And that's you know, that's all you can ask for in that situation. Is, exactly, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to necessarily keep them from getting the shot up. You just, just want to make sure it's not a good one. It's it's a hard, you know, and and she did her job down there in the post. So, quick game reset for you here. Folks, it is the fourth quarter, obviously. We have 32.3 seconds left. Tie ball game, 54-54. Muskies have two fouls. Assumption has four. four. So, the next foul by the Knights, we will be shooting two, which is a huge advantage in this huge case. Huge advantage Both right teams now. have one timeout left. Possession arrow does favor the Muskies. Muskies. So, you know, on spec, if you were... We're going to go to... Uh, you know, we don't have Amazon Analytics. We don't have AWS <laughs> powering this. We're going to use uh, the Chris Anderson sure, something or others. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. You know, it would seem all the all of the individual elements would seem to favor the Muskies at this point. Right. But none of them so much that it by any means changes the fact that one shot can change, change this the game. game. Right. We just have to play really good defense here. And you can be a little more aggressive on the defensive side if you want right. because you do have the fouls to give. There is no shot clock. Nope, we're well beyond shot clock land. And again, the Muskies only have two fouls, so they don't have to necessarily... I mean, she thought about that. Yeah. They're working for the last shot. And a quick foul there by Seaman, but that's the third. So we can do that with 11 seconds here. And so, you know, at this point, obviously, they are trying to hold it, uh, Assumption, for the last shot. Yep. And 
and she seems going to have to get up quick and get back, which she did. Fought through a screen. Nice Great job there by Seaway. Long three off I the back, and we're going to overtime, I folks. I did not have the time to get that out wow. in 11 seconds. I'm thinking this is they're not going to get up anything. And that was just really that was good a tremendous, defense. Tremendous defense by the Muskies. Wow. It was a solid. Uh, right, they, 20 seconds, wasn't it? Uh, I think it might have been a little more than that. Yeah, it was like 23, I thought. But, I mean, that's just, that's really, really good defense. And so, proud of the girls for that. Four minute overtime. Yep. Fouls carry over. Carry over. As I understand it. Oh, do we get an extra timeout? They just put one on the, and I, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Yeah. Because they just put, yep, there we go. Yep. Both teams went from one to two. Yep. So we do get an extra timeout. Wow. Bonus coverage, folks. I love it. We won't even charge you extra for the extra no, session. No, we won't. So we're at four minutes. 54. Although assumption, folks, if you'd like to contribute. No, just totally kidding. Right. Just totally kidding. <laughs> We're, we're more than happy to do this for everybody on both sides of the ball. Correct. And then we do have a jump ball situation. Because if you can't have fun watching high school basketball, what are you going to have, have fun, fun doing? doing? Exactly. We need to get this jump ball. And we yes. do. Now we got to score here. And then for the next four minutes, we have to score more than they do. Yep. Good job bringing it back out. So maybe not quite as much pressure on her. Zillig thought about a three there. Working over to Seaman. Back over to Lerma. Dribble penetrate. Dribble penetrate underneath. Kick out to Watson. Just... Couldn't quite handle the pass correctly. Zillig step back three, short. Follows Look her shot that. and gets Look. the rebound. Look what happens when you follow your shot, kids. Yep. Good things happen. Because now you've got another 30 seconds on the board. Yep. You've got the ability to essentially eliminate a whole possession off of Davenport the overtime there. session. Watson. Dribbling around the top of the key over to Zillig, who takes it again. A little bit long this time. Now we need a defensive stand. Just like last time. Help her, help her, help her, help her. Gets a floater to fall for two. I will say this. Number three is enjoyable to watch. She yeah. like stalks. When she has the ball, she like she's almost like a predator. <laughs> Lerma. Like a lion, not like the predator from the movies. Ooh, steal there by assumption. This is a big possession right here. Miss number three open down there underneath, so... This is a monstrosity possession for Muskies here. we got to get a stop. Floater. And the oh, rebound. Davenport. Uh, nice block, block by Zillig. By that could be the play of the game. Wow. If what a this block. Off, that, that'll be what keeps this game alive for the Muskies. See, it was Mufasa. It <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> they got scared. Gosh, we got to worry Ooh. about those passes. And we did get a foul underneath. And it should put the girls to the line. That's five. Was that five or is it after five? When we end, when we end up figuring. Yeah, it's shooting two. Yep, yep. There we shooting go. two. Yep. yep. Chance to tie it up here. I'm going to get greedy. Make the first one, miss the second one, get the rebound, and put up a point. Get two more. Uh, no, i say that that's not greedy. Greedy would be make the first one, miss the second, get the rebound, kick it out to Watson for a three. Three. There we go. There we go. That's greedy. Or Lerma. I mean, either one. They're either both one. out there. They're both out there. And they both can do it. Pick your guard. Either one. Second one. Up and good. We got a tie game. So we'll take the tie. Girls go stay in the full court press. And again, Lerma just, you can tell. 
you can watch her watch her player's stomach. Like, yep. you can just see that's what she's doing. And we got to get a basket on our end up to Lerma. Slow down, kid. It's not there. No foul. A little bumpage. At least we keep the ball there. Yep. Lerma looks confused <laughs> by the fact that she didn't get, well, no, maybe not. Confused. I would say confused. I would say maybe mad. Timeout, possibly. There you go. Reno gets the ball. Reno's been kind of quiet the second half. Yeah. You know, I say that so that she can just, like, step back, pop a three. Timeout by Muskies. Minute 22 left. And uh, we're down by two. Chance to tie it back up here. Y you know, and it's these situations. Uh, and, again, folks, these, this is not questioning. This is, like, Chris being... Basketball you, guru. What? No, no. <laughs> the exact opposite, actually. No, you know, 18 seconds left in the possession. Coach saw something she wasn't comfortable with. Right. Right. I, I don't know what it was. I mean, but obviously she saw something like, okay, we got to reset. And that's something that she knows because she watches these players. She's been with right. them all season. She could tell something was off. Right. Or she wanted to change something. Yeah. Right. And, and and in both circumstances, it's a good timeout. You know, it's oh, a, yeah. it's a good uh, spot yeah. for a timeout. I understand it. It makes sense. Well, because every possession matters. Here. Exactly. I mean, you know. You do some quick math. You could this could be a three possession game. Yep. And we can't afford not to. have And you're it. down one. So yeah, I mean we you we need gotta have the basket here yep. of some sort. Got to get some kind of points here, whether it's two, three, four. Nice thing for the Muskies, nobody's got more than two fouls. So right. it's not like if we have to go into a Foul fouling situation, um, we're going to be fine. Kicked out to. I feel like Watson. I feel like it's time for like Zilk to bunk. It's not a dunk or something. Whoa. That's that almost is musky. A steal. Almost a steal. But muskies do hold it with 11 seconds left on the shot clock here. Muskies trail. And 50, what they're 56. doing now is just letting us have another timeout by coach here. That'll be her last one of the half. Or of the game, of the overtime session here. At least this overtime. Yeah. What do you think? Can we can we play two? Can we, can we, can I we think banks? we can. I mean, we can play obviously two. play two, let's, let's but play I, would, two. I would prefer not to play two and get the W, you know, before the In second In the next overtime. minute 14. Yeah. And, you know, I will say this. I would not feel like... I have to put up a three yet. Yeah, no. You know, I mm -mm. think you can still work inside. Left but what on the shot clock, you, you can work it in. You can, right. You can try and get that easy basket to get it tied and then, you know, play it as a two possession. Right. Play this as a two possession, possession. scenario. Right. It's kind of like, you know, in football, if you know you're going to go a fourth on fourth down, third down becomes completely different. Different, right. You, know, you got four yards to go. If you get two, it's okay if you know right. you're going on for four on, fourth. on the yep. fourth. Down. Over to Reno for a three. Oh. They got blocked, but Lerma right there. Back to Reno for three. Block Another. again. <sighs> now we've got to get a hard stop and yep. get the ball down the court and in the hole. Two blocks in a row. And a foul on Zillig. That's okay. That's, that's okay. That's her third. Doesn't reset the shot clock. Doesn't nope. doesn't really affect anything other than put him closer to the bonus. Right. Ooh, that's going to be my new chant. We can't, can't hear, hear you. you. There it is. In the corner. Cutter Whoa. cross. Oh, wow. And I'm not sure what happened up there at the top. I three point she, play she here. She cut, and Lerma was a step behind her the whole way. Davenport calls a timeout here. Obviously, taking a four point lead, chance to make it five. Uh, 
So regardless of what happens on the shot here, the Muskies are going to have to go. Yep. I mean, there's no no way around it. Yep. And, uh, you know, does it ha- I don't know well, that it has to be a three, but it, it probably it doesn't. You know, be. I mean, at this well, here's the thing: it's a two possession game at this. Yep. No matter how you cut it, right? I I'll be honest; I'm not counting a three pointer with a foul and a free throw, right? So, I, I think you've got to almost try and push the ball. You've got to take it to the hole, right? You've got to try and draw a foul, foul. Um, to where if you don't make it, at least you've, you're at the line. You're and the at clock the line. The stopped. clock stopped. Maybe yep. you get a three point play out of it. And even if it's a, you know, if you're driving and it's a, on the floor, you're still going to get to the free throw line. line. So, Correct. I mean, I think at this point, you've got to push the ball and try and get them to make a mistake, make them get handsy, make them, right. you know, hit you with the body. Something. And she does make the free throw, so big three-point play there. Now, but here's the thing. That really doesn't change the math much. No, nope, it doesn't. And... Little floater Lots there. Of, yep. That's jump ball. Jump ball. Jump ball. That'll be Musk, assum- uh, wait, yep. assumption ball. Yep. Yep. That'll be assumption ball. That's not all bad though. Nope. And you know I don't mind that floater from. Nope. I uh, don't either. It, it's, it's what we had to it's do. It's a good look. You know, and she had to do something. And you think if the muskies don't get, I was going to say, they're going to have to foul here pretty quick if they don't get the steal right away. Yeah, and because you've got several possessions to make up in a little bit of time. Seconds. We're Macy picking up her third. And, of course, obviously in this scenario, Assumption is going to pull all the rebounders, keep them on yep. the defensive side. And she does miss the first one. Because yeah, at a five-point lead, you still don't want to give up the breakaway two because right. you're going to put it within a one-possession game at that point. Second one, no good. Take it all the way. Yep. Make them stop you. Oh. That was that was actually a good possession was, there. Well, it just you, didn't fall. It just didn't fall, and that's kind of where it's been for the Muskies this second half. Just a quick reminder: we will uh, stay here for the boys' game. Tip off probably about twenty minutes or so after the end of this game. Yep. We will stay on this stream. We'll stay live here. For those of you tuning in at 7.30, expecting to see the boys, obviously yeah. we're in overtime. It's not really the fourth quarter there, folks. That's all the further they can apparently put it on the scoreboard. Right. Um, Down 63-56 with 20 seconds so left. Seven points, 23 seconds. Let it roll. It's, let yep, it roll. Let it roll. And then the Muskies do come up and play defense. Now, we are, again, we are in the bonus, so if they can get aggressive. Watson two. I think... Lerma in. I think that puts seconds. the math. That puts the math in a pretty difficult spot. Don't foul her. Yep, I think at this point, just hold it. Yep, musky ball on the five-second turnover. Yep, and that's okay for assumption. assumption. And smart play by the girls, just staying there right on top of her. Yep, not fouling. I mean, you'd love to say that foul was going to make a difference there. But, I mean, but Zillig, long three off the bank board and does not fall. Muskies will fall to the Assumption Knights, 63-56, to 56, in a very well-played game on both sides. Uh, defense, defense tenacity, defense tenacity. Um, you know, slug it's like a heavyweight fight, slug for slug. Um I was I was uh, very impressed by both teams. Very ha- uh, girls don't need to hang their head. Um, mm-hmm. It was just one of those nights, and uh, you know it is what it is. Player of the game? Uh, I'm struggling with that one. Uh, I, I you know this is something that we've we've had to 
struggle with more often than you think because, like tonight, Seaman and Zillig are probably your two leaders. Uh, uh, there are some things that I really liked out of, I mean, Reno in the first half. Yeah. Um, Watson played a great game. We don't have an hour. Let's pick up somebody. Uh, who, who I'll go got? with Seaman. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. No, I think. You know, it's just. Uh, it's tough. It's, it's tough. tough. It's tough it in, really a, is. in a situation like this. Yep. Because you know the girls were so close. Right. And, uh, but they'll live to fight another day. Yep, so exactly. We will take a quick break. Again, I said, like I said, we'll stay here. We're going to run some uh, commercials from your sponsors. And we will be back. Uh, it looks like they're putting about 15 minutes on the clock. Yep, I will 15. leave the uh, scoreboard up there for you so you know about how far we are away from tip off of the boys' game. All right. Muskie Sports are brought to you by Muscatine Power and Water, Muscatine Lawn and Power, Rivo Plumbing and Heating, Unity Point Health, Trinity Muscatine, Bear of Muscatine, Muscatine Church of Christ, H&J Cards, It Takes a Village Animal Rescue and Resources, Impact Fitness and Nutrition, Zach Fry at the Lee Agency, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Muscatine, Muscatine Symphony Orchestra, Josiah Anderson at Real Estate Resource Associates, Star Collectibles, Harper Cycling and Fitness, Muscatine Charities, and a special shout out to Mississippi Pearl Photography for all those great pictures of your Muscatine Muskies. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support Big Brothers Big Sisters. Almost like it knows when you can least afford. Ah, another clogged drain? Lucky for you, Rivo is always standing by. With multiple master plumbers on staff, Rivo not only handles your home-related issues, Rivo will also diagnose and design large-scale commercial piping systems. Family-owned, reliably honest, remarkably affordable. Complete kitchen and bath home improvement technicians. Because Rivo won't rest until your plumbing problems are gone. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. MPW is committed to keeping Muscatine's lights on, water running, and our customers connected to the world. We monitor all utility services ability. Whether it's routine system maintenance work or an outage response, our crews work on your behalf. Responsive 24-7, 365, in the field, behind the scenes, around the clock, MPW is always here. I'm proud to be a part of the system control team. I'm Jennifer Phelps and I am MPW. In the future, more and more of the energy we use will come from renewables. However, the transition to being carbon free is a long journey, taking years of research and trillions of dollars nationwide. Our Powering the Future plan is a balanced approach. It increases sustainability while maintaining reliability and affordable rates for Muscatine. And it allows the flexibility to adopt new innovations as they become viable. The future is coming and we're embracing change to do what's best for our community. Learn more at mpw.org. 
Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas, has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, call us for your next remodel. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience. We know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero-turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week. As expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels with professional crafts Doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At MPW, we're excited about the future of Muscatine and our role in supporting the community's growth and prosperity. I've raised my family here, and I'm proud to do impactful work for my neighbors every day. And we're working daily on MPW's Powering the Future plan to ensure we can deliver reliable, affordable, and sustainable services to your homes and businesses for generations to come. I am Jamie Raker, and I am MPW. Muskie Sports are brought to you by Muscatine Power and Water, Muscatine Lawn and Power, Rivo Plumbing and Heating, Unity Point Health, Trinity Muscatine, Bear of Muscatine, Muscatine Church of Christ, H&J Cards, It Takes a Village Animal Rescue and Resources, Impact Fitness and Nutrition, Zach Fry at the Lee Agency, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Muscatine, Muscatine Symphony Orchestra, Josiah Anderson at Real Estate Resource Associates, Star Collectibles, Harper Cycling and Fitness, Muscatine Charities, and a special shout out to Mississippi Pearl Photography for all those great pictures of your Muscatine Muskies. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. So a time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support big brothers, big sisters. Almost like it knows when you can least afford. Ah, another clogged drain? Lucky for you, Rivo is always standing by. With multiple master plumbers on staff, Rivo not only handles your home-related issues, Rivo will also diagnose and design large-scale commercial piping systems. Family-owned, reliably honest, remarkably affordable. Complete kitchen and bath home improvement technicians. Because Rivo won't rest until your plumbing problems are gone. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. 
so you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. MPW is committed to keeping Muscatine's lights on, water running, and our customers connected to the world. We monitor all utility services day and night to ensure reliability. Whether it's routine system maintenance work or an outage response, our crews work on your behalf. Responsive 24-7, 365, in the field, behind the scenes, around the clock, MPW is always here. I'm proud to be a part of the system control team. I'm Jennifer Phelps and I am MPW. In the future, more and more of the energy we use will come from renewables. However, the transition to being carbon free is a long journey, taking years of research and trillions of dollars nationwide. Our Power in the Future plan is a balanced approach. It increases sustainability while maintaining reliability and affordable rates for Muscatine. And it allows the flexibility to adopt new innovations as they become viable. The future is coming and we're embracing change to do what's best for our community. Learn more at mpw.org. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, call us for your next remodel. We are looking for a zero turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At MPW, we're excited about the future of Muscatine and our role in supporting the community's growth and prosperity. I've raised my family here, and I'm proud to do impactful work for my neighbors every day. And we're working daily on MPW's Powering the Future plan to ensure we can deliver reliable, affordable, and sustainable services to your homes and businesses for generations to come. I am Jamie Raker, and I am MPW. Muskie Sports are brought to you by Muscatine Power and Water, Muscatine Lawn and Power, Rivo Plumbing and Heating, Unity Point Health, Trinity Muscatine, Bear of Muscatine, Muscatine Church of Christ, H&J Cards, It Takes a Village Animal Rescue and Resources, Impact Fitness and Nutrition, Zach Fry at the Lee Agency, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Muscatine, Muscatine Symphony Orchestra, Josiah Anderson at Real Estate Resource Associates, Star Collectibles, Harper Cycling and Fitness, Muscatine Charities, and a special shout out to Mississippi Pearl Photography for all those great pictures of your Muscatine Muskies. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. 
Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf. Mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. So it's time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support big brothers, big sisters. Almost like it knows when you can least afford. Ah, another clogged drain? Lucky for you, Rivo is always standing by. With multiple master plumbers on staff, Rivo not only handles your home-related issues, Rivo will also diagnose and design large-scale commercial piping systems. Family-owned, reliably honest, remarkably affordable. Complete kitchen and bath home improvement technicians. Because Rivo won't rest until your plumbing problems are gone. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. MPW is committed to keeping Muscatine's lights on, water running, and our customers connected to the world. We monitor all utility services day and night to ensure reliability. Whether it's routine system maintenance work or an outage response, our crews work on your behalf. Responsive 24-7, 365, in the field, behind the scenes, around the clock, MPW is always here. I'm proud to be a part of the system control team. I'm Jennifer Phelps and I am MPW. In the future, more and more of the energy we use will come from renewables. However, the transition to being carbon free is a long journey, taking years of research and trillions of dollars nationwide. Our Powering the Future plan is a balanced approach. It increases sustainability while maintaining reliability and affordable rates for Muscatine. And it allows the flexibility to adopt new innovations as they become viable. The future is coming and we're embracing change to do what's best for our community. Learn more at mpw.org. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, call us for your next remodel. We are looking for a zero turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At MPW, we're excited about the future of Muscatine and our role in supporting the community's growth and prosperity. 
I've raised my family here, and I'm proud to do impactful work for my neighbors every day. And we're working daily on MPW's Powering the Future plan to ensure we can deliver reliable, affordable, and sustainable services to your homes and businesses for generations to come. I am Jamie Raker, and I am MPW. Muskie Sports are brought to you by Muscatine Power and Water, Muscatine Lawn and Power, Rivo Plumbing and Heating, Unity Point Health, Trinity Muscatine, Bear of Muscatine, Muscatine Church of Christ, H&J Cards, It Takes a Village Animal Rescue and Resources, Impact Fitness and Nutrition, Zach Fry at the Lee Agency, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Muscatine, Muscatine Symphony Orchestra, Josiah Anderson at Real Estate Resource Associates, Star Collectibles, Harper Cycling and Fitness, Muscatine Charities, and a special shout out to Mississippi Pearl Photography for all those great pictures of your Muscatine Muskies. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. So it's time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of... Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And Toby's decided to join us. Toby, hi. How are you tonight, sir? Woo. All right. Nope. Number four, Danielle Thompson. Number five, Spencer B. 
Maria. Number 11, Adrian Watson. Number 13, Jagger Johnson. And number 15, Paul Hans. The team is coached by Luke Torelli. Assistant coaches Joel Witchers, Brandon Van Zandt, Doug Williams, and Brady Lukowski. And now the starters. For Assumption, 6'4", sophomore. Number 4, John Shabbat. 6'1", senior. Number 5, Elijah King. 6'5", junior. Number 10, Braylon Thompson. 6'6", junior. Number 22, Joey Thunderbird. And a 6'8", senior. Number 24, Joe Tallman. For the Muskies, a six foot four sophomore, number two, Talon Becker. A six two sophomore, number 22, Nate Lucarinen. A six foot three freshman, number 23, Sam Church. A six foot five junior, number 24, Ian Church. Junior, number 33, Kate Doffel. Your officials this evening, Mr. Randy Holler, Mr. Brayden Peters, and Mr. Andrew Cooper. All right, Toby, are you ready for this? We're ready. You're ready for this. We're ready. Uh, um, he's Looks like Coach Trelly's uh, changed the line up a little bit. Letting Nate start um, over Spencer. Um, I don't think that's... Um, I don't think that'll be indicative of the total time spent on the right, court between exactly. the two. Exactly. I think they've got, you know, both are going to see plenty of playing time. Exactly. Over the next 32 minutes of game time. And getting ready. Church getting in for the jump ball. And Muskies get the jump. Nicely done. Assumption coming out in a straight man, it looks like. Muskies working around. Little backdoor potential cut there for Dolfelt, but just, just a, a little bit too far for him. Muskies out in their man. <coughs> Ian. Nice steal Still by Ian. Back the other way. He does get the shooter's touch. Working it inside there to Davenport. Draw. No foul. Rebound. Church. Out ahead. Great ball handling by Becker. Yeah, wonderful ball wow. handling. Church three. In and out. Good rebound on the other end by... Uh, that was Sam that got the rebound, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, Sam got the rebound. Some great ball handling there. Little floater by Davenport. Good. Nate, a little crossover talent. Thought about a shot there. Working hard inside his Dolpho. Kicks it back over to Talon. Up underneath the basket, and that'll be off the Muskies, and it'll go to Davenport. Assumption will inbounds. Muskies fall back. Two to two game here. Good defense there by Church. Good things happen when you keep your hands up. Yep. Another steal. 
Looks like Davenport's in a... They're in a 2-3 now, it looks like. Church out to Dahlfeld. Uh, no, I don't Not think they really. are. Not really. It's just... Nope. They were just sagging a lot. Yeah. Ian. Ian working underneath. Ian, yeah. Nope. Nope, got so him shuffled. Got him shuffled just a tick second too soon. Boys supporting the pink shoes, pink socks for pink out night. A little cancer awareness. Love it. 2-2 two -two game here. Five minutes left in the first quarter, a little bit more. Inside. Oh, good job there by Nate to step in the passing lane there. Almost got the steal. Sam. Nice work underneath. But good rebound there by Dolphelt. Ian thought about the three. Over to Talon. Thought about a three. Kick out the church. Nate for three. Off the front of the rim there. Rebound Davenport. Kicking it up ahead. Nice little back dribble in and out. Rebound Nate, but Ooh. picks up the foul. He got. That wasn't. It was just. And it was interesting. It was just going for the ball. And there's Spencer checking in. Spencer in now for Nate. Nice work there, breaking the press up ahead to Church for three. Long rebound, Spencer to Talon. There we there go. There we go. Ooh, got a travel Talon, there. Nope, Talon got his hands on it. Must have tip, tip, ben, bleh, bleh. Bleh, been tipped by Davenport Assumption there on the go. way out. So it looks like Ian's going to inbounds here to Talon. Over to Ian to Spencer. Back over to Sam. Good ball rotation around the top of the key there. Hand off to Ian. Loses the handle there for a second. Setting a nice pick there for Talon. Dalfelt out to Church for three. Front of the rim. Rebound assumption. Trying to go coast to coast there. Good defense underneath by Spencer. Three front of the rim. Rebound, Church. Dalfelt. Dolphel takes it up strong, gets it to fall. Muskies get back on defense. Oh, he traveled. No, he called a timeout. I thought he took a step there, but timeout by assumption. I think it's just a 30, isn't it? I'm assuming. Yeah, I think it's 30. Coach is not very happy right now.
Muskies is doing a good job here in the opening quarter with a 7-2 lead. Playing some really stout defense and making them work for their shots. Good rebound there by Assumption. Rebound, another rebound for Church underneath. Crashing the boards hard is Church. Over to Spencer. Thought about it. Inside to Ian. Goes up. Tries to draw the foul, but no call. And then Ian gets a ticky-tacky foul on the other end. Where he was just trying to stop a fast break. Why do we have six fouls on ours when that was our first foul? It says we have 16 fouls. I'm guessing that's not correct. And we're trying to get that fixed right now, it looks. There we go. Now it's under control. So one team foul, the one team foul. Both teams have five, both five timeouts left, it looks like. Dribbling in, coming up with a press here. Talon. Great ball handling skills. He's just smooth with the basketball. Church. Inside to Spencer. No foul there. A little turnover situation. Three from the corner. Long rebound, Church. And then he Ooh. said he walk. I don't know about that. Yeah. I don't know about that. He had to stop because if he would have kept going, he would have ran into one of Davenport's players and probably lost the ball. So I, don't, I didn't see the travel, but once again, I'm up here and they're down there. So need to get a stop here. Minute left in the first quarter. And he stepped on the out of bounds line. Dolphelt playing some really good defense underneath. Davenport in a kind of soft press right now, looks like. Trying to get him in a corner to trap him. Up ahead to Sam. Good simple behind the back. Talon takes it in. Kicks it off to Dolphel. Great work. Spencer, long three rebound. Spencer, nice job. Talon for three. Ooh, a little bit off the bank board. Church with a great, great rebound. And he takes it back up. A possible chance for a three-point play here. And he does get the three-point play. Thirty seconds left here in the first quarter, and Muskies lead twelve to five. So, Toby, mm -hmm. we're going to do a little science in honor of this being a high school. Okay. Your eardrum uh -huh. is very similar to what other organ? In your body. Hmm. Eardrum, and I'm going to say um, eye. Three-pointer, short, 
And Cade Dolphit with the rebound. Kicks and it up. And Talco. Oh, just missed it. What a way out. to end the first quarter. Muskies lead 12-5. Any shots? I Any? said I. I'm going to say I. No, your actually, eye. your skin. It's very much like your skin. Really? Say you get a blown eardrum, it can heal just like your skin does, yes, apparently. Correctly. Yes, correctly. Apparently, it yeah. takes uh, two to four weeks after getting hit in the ear with uh, racquetball. Really? For it to heal, yes, apparently. Two to four Thank weeks. Thank you, Tim Kelly, if Is you're watching. Is that what they say? Yeah, that's All what right. they say. So, you, oh, go ahead, Tim. Chris. Well, no, so, so as we look at the second quarter here, the Muskies mm -hmm. lead 12-5. Mm -hmm. um, things are obviously going reasonably well. Reasonably well. What would you like to see the boys do a little bit better in the second quarter? Uh, and right now? It's kind of hard to nitpick on them right now because they're doing a well, little. It's not a nitpick. You know? I, I, no, and I, I, I understand should clarify. what you're saying. Yeah. I, should, I should clarify. You know, this is, as you said, this is not a nitpick. This is, this is like what's the next step for the Muskies. The next step is, you know, um, keeping the intensity up because right now you got assumption on the ropes. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? you got to keep the intensity up. And, and not fall into, okay, we got an eight-point lead. We can give up a possession here. We can give up a possession there. You know, just keep the intensity up. Keep the, you know, the pedal down, so to speak. Um, you know, uh, the terminology of stepping on their throat. I don't want to go there. <laughs> you <laughs> no, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, no, the, but you know what I mean? The you, finishing of the, right. No, you absolutely. Know, I, I mean, you just, you cannot let up now. Yeah, you could say, instead of that, you could say going for the jugular. Right, there that, you go. That keeps our throat reference and it's not stepping. Stepping, right. No. But, oh. um, I mean, they're, they're playing well on defense, a little... And, they're, and, the, and uh, you know, they're working passes well. They're dribbling well. You know, they're penetrating well. They're doing a lot of things really good right they're now, staying, guys. They're staying calm. They're staying under yep. control for the most part. Yep. I mean, so it's kind of hard to say other than just keep well, the intensity it, up. No, I mean, I, I, yeah. Think, yeah. I think that's the thing. For for this team, it's about that composure right. aspect, right? Good denial of the pass there by Spencer, so they didn't have a look inside. I really like watching Spencer play ball. I mean, he's oh wow, that was a big that was, hero. <laughs> that was a lot of ground cover. <laughs> Spencer thought about a shot there. It's Spencer never seems to lack intensity. No, he's he's going to come hard. Church from three. Puts him at, should put him at eight for the night. Seven, yep. yeah. Eight. Yeah, oh, eight. Yeah, that's right. Eight. Yep. Forcing him to that. Oh, I thought that went off Davenport there, but forcing him to the baseline there. And um, so that he's too far underneath the basket, it seemed like. Oh, we got a. Tie our shoe here. Nice job there by Talon to step in that lane. Assumption moving the ball around the key. Spencer stepping over that screen. That could have been called an illegal screen. Sam playing some really good defense there. Up ahead to uh, Ian Spencer. Help him. Got to come to the ball, guys. Five okay. seconds. He didn't have anywhere to go with that. No, he didn't. Fifteen seven lead here with six minutes left in the second quarter. Oh, get that, Cade. That's off. Yep. There we go. Another turnover there by Assumption. Musky defense just forcing a turnover there. I mean, so I will say this: this is the first game. 
in the post Torelli era of Discover Muscatine from the announcing booth section, I, I think I, I still really like the idea of this Torelli cast. I do too. I don't have church. I think it would be fun to do. And Ooh, underneath, Man. banging hard underneath. Dolph with the rebound Dolph and the fall. Was, folks, that is how you play underneath right there. That was a tremendous job gathering the ball in amongst the mess and instinctively putting it right back up. Oh, great stop there by Spencer on the other end. Great recovery oh, by Kate. wow. Nice little spin move there by Davenport. Sam over to Ian. Spencer. Over to Sam. What do you do? Step on the line? Good job fighting over top of that screen. Ooh. Good defense. Just nice little floater there by Davenport. Kicking it around the key. Sam back out to Talon. Over to Spencer on the corner. Back up to the top. Church. Church for three, a little oh. bit long. Great rebound by Spencer. Goes and oh puts my. it up, and he's going to get a three-point play. That's really and good. That's and <laughs> I, I also want to give a quick shout out to the acting job <laughs> done at the top of the key. <laughs> or, well, actually, I guess it was more of the elbow, but right. I, great loud fall. Didn't quite get the job done, but right. uh, that was. A tremendous effort. Yeah. Taking nothing away from Spencer underneath. Right. Of course. <laughs> Possible three-point play here on the back of the rim. Spencer just, he you know, he, he wasn't really in the best spot for that rebound, but he went up and got it. You know, oh. No oh. basket there. I thought that on was the in, floor. I thought that was an incidental contact there, but apparently we were wrong. Yeah. Apparently it was a block. So they're going to go to the line for two. Team, team second. That's not what. Roger just said it was the second team foul. We don't show any on the board. That is that our second one this Yeah, that's our quarter, second one. This mm -hmm. quarter, that's what yep. I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Scoreboard's fibbing to us. Yep. And does get that one to fall. Nineteen to thirteen. Six point lead here for the Muskies. With a little bit over four minutes left. Spencer. Over to Sam. What, well, maybe the scoreboard's right, and Roger was one ahead. There we go, Dolphin underneath from Church. Muskie's lead, 21-13. Three and a half minutes left to go in the second half. Or for second quarter, first half. Nice block by Talon. That's off, Musk, off Davenport. Well, did, did Sam get it first, and then Talon finished I it think, off? I think you're right. It might be a... It's kind of like when they split sacks, right? Yeah, you know, there you go. You get half a block Half on a that? block, yep. Who was the lion that was like, uh, kept saying that they kept taking sacks from him? It was. Uh, uh, that was absolutely hilarious. It was funny. Was it Hutch? Oh, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't remember. Oh, yeah. and speaking of which, I got to throw a little tidbit at you. Did you see Kittle lay him out on Sunday? The old Hawkeye taking out the oh, Wolverine. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had to give you static about that. I mean, that was, oh, good stuff underneath there for Spencer. And Dolphelt picks up a, a foul. Also, 
And, you know, we would be completely remiss if we didn't give a shout out to Josh Schuler, the Muskie graduate, who is a strength and uh, conditioning coach, coach for the Lions. Um, obviously, they have Seriously? a great season. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, he's been there a couple of years now, I believe. They had a great year. I mean, they, they, they did. did. And, a, and a, as being a 49er fan, if we were going to lose, I would uh, that game. Great job. Great uh, defense. Spencer taking it the other way, draws the foul. Got a block, so Sam will go to the line. There we go. Now we're at three home. Yeah, two away. Yeah. Yep. So, so to clarify, folks, the Muskies are at three team fouls. The Knights are at two, two. for the second quarter. And Sam gets the first one to fall. I can tell I've been in little kid basketball mode because I'm talking halves. <laughs> and that's what it is, though. I mean, that's what they do. They play halves. Are those seriously Sam's first points? Oh, uh, yeah. And that's his second he, one? Yeah, and actually. Wow. Right now, oh no, I took that back. Got to reach in there by Hans. And that's our fourth. Man, for the first quarter, not having much for fouls either way. They're didn't didn't Talon hit a three at the beginning of the game? Yes. He doesn't show any points on the board. I got three. Ooh, tried to get it into Sam. We got a jump ball situation. And that will go to Davenport. Or no, that'll go to Muskies. Muskie ball. Because they had it at the quarter, didn't they? Yeah. Yep. Muskie ball. Underneath, Talon will be inbounding. Now the referees are meeting, meeting of the minds. Do, 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 do. So here's the question. Uh -huh. You have three referees in a pile. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it a meeting of a mind or the minds? Is there more than one there between three referees? I would say there's more than one. One and a half? I'll say two. Two. Oh, okay. I'll give them no. two. Uh, all kidding. <laughs> all kidding, folks. Definitely the... I, I'll tell you this. You cannot pay me enough to do what no, those gentlemen do. you cannot. And it's even worse outside of, like, once you start doing travel stuff. Oh, boy. No way. Yeah. I'm <laughs> nope. <laughs> Hans thought about it. Dribbles Ooh. in. Oh. Got a little ahead of himself there, I think. Yep. I don't think he thought he was going to be quite that wide of a lane. Oh, great Talon stuff tips on the other side. Talon tips it to Cole. Up to Cole. This is a... In the church. This is a lineup we haven't really seen before. No. A combination, anyway. Inside, Sam. So much height on that court. Yeah. Out to Spencer, who almost loses it, but gathers it back up. I mean, Spencer's probably the only one that's not 6'3 or an over, right? right? Long three by Church. Back of the rim. And Spencer's not, he can't be too far behind. No. That's a foul. That is 100%. Great job getting back by Sam. And set, that's great transition defense. And saying. He can't ask for anything more than no, that. No. Protecting himself and, and like, okay. Here we go. So, a minute 15 left in the second quarter. Muskies lead 23-16. I don't think you know, was quite expecting that one that quick. Talon with a long three rebound off of Spencer. He had it for a second, but... Fifty-three point eight seconds left in the half. Muskies ahead, twenty-three to sixteen. Yeah. 
Good rotation there. Rebound, Church. Down to 38 seconds left. Hans thought about a pass. Over to, got to help him, boys. Oh, pass got away there from Talon. Telegraph that a little bit. Ooh, lost that one down underneath. Nice, more, more really good defense there from Sam to make him work underneath like that. And he's gonna, Sam's gonna inbound it to Talon. Up the court comes Talon with 13 seconds left. Over to Sam. To Haunts. Long pass so, over to Talon. Church for three. Oh. So as we head to half, the Muskies lead 23-16. And I have a question that I want to toss out to all the former players and coaches out there. Because this is a conversation after the tournament this weekend. Okay. As a player, did you ever actually hear your coach yelling at you? <laughs> or was it selective hearing? <laughs> <laughs> was it was it like legitimately couldn't hear? Was it like because sometimes it's amazing. It, it feels like, you know, those messages are loud, clear, received right. and, and acted upon. Right. Other times maybe not. Uh, we're going to bring in the Muskies here. Anyone who makes the half-court shot, upperclassmen will get a free prom ticket. Okay, so we got a quick fundraiser going on. Looks like a dollar per shot from half-court. If you make it and you're a senior, I'm not going to get this right, but a senior gets a free prom ticket or thaw ticket, right. something or other. You, you get something. Either way, they're going to have a little fun. It's basically what it boils down to. Correct. From half court. From half court. Has to be half court. I will say that's one thing about our huge horizontal logo is, you know, if you're going to do logo shots, you know, you're actually not that far past the three-point line on the spear tip side. Whoa! Whoa! Uh, he definitely had the oomph. He got that. he got his dollars worth out of that. One. And maybe on the bounce move. <laughs> you know what was interesting? That was so close. we got to go up and watch the Globe Trotters a couple weeks ago when they were mm -hmm. uh, up in the Quad Cities. And when they shoot these shots, they generally aren't shooting them in a standard like shot. They do a spin. Really? Yeah, it's like a snap spin, and I, I wonder if it's... Uh, obviously, the tighter the spin, the more control you're going to have over it. You right. Know, you get it. Um, but I wonder if it's just like it, it can be more consistent that way. Right. Like, as opposed to... Uh, and they also had a heck of a lot more arch than huh. you would anticipate. Right. From half court, huh? Yeah, so what do you think about it? The physics of a basketball shot, we're going to go... We're going to go nerd here. Uh, <laughs> but the there is an ideal angle and there's an ideal speed. And if you kind of sum it up, basically what it works out to is you want the ball moving Seaman. forward as slowly as possible Clear when it up. gets over the rim. Oh, right? yes. Right. Because then that's when it's most likely to be able to go in. We're, we are not ever going to win a half court. Oh, baseball style. Oh. Um, and so I, I think that's probably why they go higher arc. Right. Because then it can be traveling slower and have a better chance of going in. Ah. Um, but that was really interesting when I was reading that. You think about You always hear people talk about shooter's touch. Right. And I even think back to watching Michael. And now granted it's right. in slow motion and all this other stuff. So it makes right. it feel even more. But like if you remember when the ball would come off his fingers... It looks so, so soft, soft, right? Um, yeah, there was there was not too much backspin. There's right. enough. Um, you know, it's not like he was spinning it, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, just it's a really interesting to see 
you know, because they do their four point shots and right. they, you know, whatever, all that other stuff. Plus the three quarters over the back shots. Uh, just to see the physics of right what they're doing. Right. Yeah, I'm in the development folks. No, that's okay. It's fine. I understand what you're saying. Ooh. You gotta get somebody to hit the rim at least. Can somebody hit? Yeah. I had two hit the rim so far. A lot of them hit the backboard. Oh. But um, I don't know if, if I went when I went down there in between games. Uh, oh. Ooh. I had the opportunity to uh, talk to some of the parents of the, the girls and uh, frustrated. <laughs> you I, know, you I know. Would imagine. Um, but um, oh. still proud, you know, and, and that's the way it should be. Um, but I did get some information on oh. Avery, um, and it's not good, guys. Uh, I don't know if I should be the guy to say this, but um, she, I was told that she does have a tear. Oh. And um, a meniscus and possibly ACL. Ooh. So she has to go back. The meniscus I can deal with, uh, you know. Um, well, I would think so. It's not yours. Well, but <laughs> <laughs> you Jeez. know. Um, <laughs> Holy cow! But um, you know, I mean, the meniscus is fixable. Um, did we get one? Yes, we did. Just get one. Um, her meniscus—that's fixable. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You, you know uh, that that she could still, you know. I mean, you can still play on it, you right. know, if you can't do any you're, more damage. You're, you're not going to do any more damage. Right. right. Um, it's just going to hurt like a son of a Yes, it is. <laughs> um, but the ACL is, yeah, that's that's scary. And whether it's a partial or a full, um, she goes back in next week, I'm being told. And um, that's, I mean, that even puts softball. Oh, yeah, that puts track in softball. I mean, the meniscus, I, if my daughter played through a meniscus. In high school, but I mean, we went through ibuprofen like it was going out of style. But I you mean, know, they say a leave lasts longer than ibuprofen. That's true, and it's better on your kidneys too, yeah. I guess. But um, you know, and um, you know, the meniscus is, like I said, is is definitely like Lisa does best. talking like we're physicians. Yeah, I mean, the best case scenario, <laughs> so to speak. But um, yeah, the, the, she does go back next week and does get it looked at again to see if it is a partial or full tear. Um, but there is something there. Um, it might even be just stretched, severely stretched. Um, but um, and then you know, hoping for the best for Avery. Um, that you know, she's one of my favorite kids. Um, I really enjoy her. She's a great she, kid. She obviously has a great sense of humor. Yes. Uh, prior to the game, the basketball team, uh, they all got to choose a staff member from MCSD to be honored and recognized. Right. And she chose her dad, but the way in which she did it, her dad teaches uh, middle school math. Mm -hmm. uh, the way in which she did it was tremendous. She she totally talked about him for the first, you know, four or five sentences as right. if he's just a teacher, you know, he always helps. He's right. always at all my games and all this other stuff. <laughs> and, you know, of course, everybody on the planet right. knows it's her dad, right? right? Uh, just a little tongue in cheek, and then at right. the end, you know, thanks, Dad. You know, right. So, uh, and, and that's, I and again, speaking of her dad, Jim Schroeder, shout out to him and his team oh for the amazing job they did at the cake auction Friday yes. night. Um, the number, if you haven't seen it on social media, forty one thousand wow. dollars. Yeah, I was talking with. Uh, Jenny Wade from the Booster Club here just wow. a, a little bit before the games. And That's amazing. 41 grand, more than last year. Not not 41,000 more than last year. Right. But just more than last year. Wow. Um, and, and, you know, it's so nice to see because, you know, coming out of COVID, it yeah. was tough. You it know, uh, the Booster Club was hurting, obviously, like everybody else right. was. You know, cause yep. You couldn't do fundraisers. You couldn't do all these other things. And, you know, as we know, the Booster Club doesn't just support athletics. It's all activities right. at the high school. Um, so seeing them kind of bouncing back and getting their feet under them and that's cool. getting back to business as usual is always a, that's a, a huge great thing number. to see. Thank you, Muscatine. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and that's, you know, the city of Muscatine, some people from the outside looking in are just like, 
oh, it's a river town, it's a big town, you know, nobody cares about nothing there. And, <laughs> but when you actually get inside Muscatine, it actually is a small town. You know, I mean, it is. It's it, a big, know, it's like the world's biggest small town. Forget yeah. Reno. Yeah, like, you know, I mean, it's the there's. I'm an outsider coming in, and yeah, I, no be, I've become friends with a lot of people in this town, and, and and it's it's just the way Muscatine is, and you know, and and I really do appreciate you know what you know the families of the Muscatine that have welcomed me, you know, and uh, you know. And it shows what type of people they are to come out and support these kids, you know. And some of them may not even have, you know, like Weikert's buying a cake for a thousand bucks the other night, you know. I mean, oh, there was, and you know, yeah, it's, I mean, like, it's, just, it's just stuff like that, and and it, it doesn't happen everywhere, guys. I mean, there's those are some expensive calories. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, back to the game now, folks. Uh, we're getting ready for the second. Back half. to the game. We got 38 seconds before we all go back right, to the game. All right, yeah. all right. Uh, but. I really like the way the Muskies are playing I, right now. I it, do. It, it'll be interesting to see if they can keep this momentum going. Uh, they're yeah. playing the new Muskie ball. You yep. know? I mean, it's mm-hmm. this is a group. The athleticism in this group is is different than what we've seen from Muskie teams in the past. Right. You know, you would usually have one or two highly athletic, correct guys on a team. Uh, you know, and then of course you know there was like the whole Jones camp area, right. you know, so <laughs> right. Whatever, right? That is what it is. But you know, that's just kind of normally how it would roll, right? Correct. Well, this one, you have eight oh, yeah. ridiculously athletic young men yep. who know what to do with the basketball. Yes, right? and they and like I said, they've played a lot of ball, that, and, and some of it together, some of it not. But um, they know the game very well and. And uh, I'm excited for their, you know, future for sure. But tonight, yeah, hey, there's what one senior on the court. Yeah, one Kinda. senior, a freshman, a couple sophomores. Yep. Help him. Hey, you know, that's no man's land there. You, that's the last place you want to get trapped. Exactly. If you make it across the half court line. So Church did a great job of not crossing. He does go to take it up and uh, try to put it in and draws a foul. But I think they're going to see on the ground. You know, and that's something that is you're teaching kids to break the press. That's exactly what you're teaching them to do. Stop before you get across the half court line. Right. Because once you do, that's that half court line's a third defender. Exactly. Ooh. Nice job by Talon there. And then he gets another block. And then another block by Church. What? Wow. I don't even know. I, I wow. don't even know what we got. Folks. Let's see what we got. There's Talon. Wow. Here comes then Church over the top. That's like, <laughs> oh, my God. That, that is exactly what I was just talking about. Wow. I, I can't put words <laughs> to this ridiculousness. I'm not sure, but I think Church could have just jumped over me. Yeah, that was and that's not saying much, folks. I'm sure, but <laughs> no, not that. I mean, that's still five seven or whatever it is, five five. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're at least five five. <laughs> I'm gonna go into my hole and cry right now, folks. That's I'm a solid five eight and a quarter. <laughs> Great stretch here by the Muskies. Hey, you know, we got to go back. Oh, Toby, watch this again. Oh, my goodness. we got to see this again. There's Talon up for the second. Sorry. Then here comes Church, just like literally oh, over the God. top, two-handed <laughs> block. Grab, like, <laughs> wow. That, just, just That's just, that is insanity. And it's our ball, right? After yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We passed oh, it. Oh, my gosh. We can have it, and then it got... He got kind of pushy, shoveyed. Yeah, down and me. Yep. And then the crowd got into it, and oh my goodness! So pretty classic press break uh, set up here. I don't know. So what you're trying to do is keep the ball moving back and forth before the ball gets to. Oh, nice press break! And he does go underneath. Nice rebound there. Golf felt to uh, kick it out to Sam. Who goes underneath and great job a foul. And what I like about this, 
they're continuing to press the attack. Right. You know, they could have let off. Right. They could have relaxed a little bit. They didn't. They kept the pressure on. And when you keep the pressure on like that, they're going to make mistakes. Right. Nice handoff there to Talon. Kick out the church for three. There it is. And then it makes it even easier to do stuff like that. Assist from Talon. Oh boy, runner, little floater, and we got a block on top of it on Nate. Possible three point play on the block. And he just wants to know what he did. So, okay. <laughs> the box. <bottom. laughs> I'm, I'm glad you folks didn't see the body language. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Rimmer. Oh, wow. Oh, great rebound there by Assumption. Nate. And he gets Whoa. picked. Jump ball situation. Yep. That'll be musky ball again. Musky ball. You know, now this Spencer. is a spot where they've been pushing this uh, press on us. You know, you'd like to see them passing their way out of this. Right. To, you know, because once you get two guys coming at you in the middle of the court. Right. It's tough. Exactly. Spencer. Because it cuts off angles. See Spencer nice back in. Nice crossover. Just pop back onto the court. Ian. 22-26. Oh, got away from him there. Nice pass. Uh, that was pretty. Yeah, that, that was, was good. That was pretty. Pretty pass, pretty finish. I'll, I'll get you. Okay. Wow. Oh, and he oh. missed it. He missed the little bunny. That's, now, wow! I didn't like the that. Muskies have got to get back under calm control. Down, calm the thing down. that they were doing the entire first half is kind of slipping away from them. Yep, long three off the front of the rim, rebound Spencer. Another rebound for Spencer. He's kind of like the Dennis Rodman. Oh, Dolphel couldn't get it to fall. Church with the rebound. Oh, oh and couldn't get it to fall. So just like that, we're down to a two-point musky lead. 26-24 with 4.57 left to go in the third. Sam Church at the line, shooting two. Come on, Samer. First one, rims in. Yeah, one thing to keep in mind is that is Assumption's third foul in wow. the third quarter already. So we got... 457 left. Two fouls gets him in the bonus. Up and good. So Sam making both free throws. What do we got here? I'm not sure. Do we have a timeout? Uh, I think we have Buddy Nose. Uh, I think you are correct. So Buddy Nose. So we got to do a quick substitution there for Assumption. Oop. Yep, got a couple drips, drippy drops, and Isabel Lerma has Look a full night tonight. Lerma. She's she's now in her trainer duty mode. I don't know if I like the sweatshirt she's got on though. You especially do not like the sweatshirt she has on. Well, <laughs> it's actually really pretty simple. I'm just not ever going to speak to her again. <laughs> No more players of the game for Isabel Lerma. Isabel Lerma. Nope. All done. That's <laughs> what happens when you win. That's tough. That's how it goes. You know, they say free speech is all well and good, and it is, but that doesn't mean there aren't consequences. Exactly. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, I feel, sometimes I feel really sorry for the guest visitors listening yep. to us. Because they uh, <laughs> haven't got a 
They don't know yeah, quick, the <laughs> background quick, there. Quick catch up. Uh, I, folks, I'm a huge Michigan fan. Isabel's wearing an Ohio State shirt. <laughs> That's what she said. It looks like Davenport will be inbounds uh, the ball now. Did they, oh, they got both. Yeah, they did. Actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, back to Spencer, Talon, Ian, Sam, and Cade out there. Oh, wow. He kept his dribble on that. A little bit of hard on Globetrotter there. Going in underneath. Oh, Sam oh, did oh. there at the last second pick up. I mean, you know, and, and he just he, he did a lot of really good things and, and just caught him there at the end. Well, and, you know, that's one of those things that you know the refs are waiting to call it. Right. There's the one standing there right next to you. It's and he does rim out of the first one. Looks like we've got somebody coming in for the shooter. Yep. That's the one that had the bloody nose. He's got cotton ball in his nose right now, it looks like. There we go. And a quick shout out to the desk. Down there in Muskieville, we've got Al Hilton, Mr. Hagee, Peterson, uh, Young Bauer, and Bates on the board. Sweet. Over to Talent. Good. I mean, Really, the the press isn't really killing us right now. I mean, for the most part, yeah, we've had a couple turnovers. Church, three! We give the, the Muskies a six point. No. Yep, six. Yeah. Yep, six point lead. They were just a little late on oh, the yeah, I, I was questioning myself there all of a sudden. Why would you do that? Three, well, three plus three is still six. Last I knew. Nice rebound there by number two for Davenport. Spencer clears it out. Almost got hacked from behind. Over to Church for three off the front of the rim. Rebound talent. Talent really good really stuff. Yep. Jump ball, Davenport to Sumption Way. That was not the call I anticipated there. Yeah, I was. Long three, rebound. Spencer had it. Don't get up. Yeah, you can't get up, bud. What do we got? Torelli's calling timeout. Great job. Great job by Spencer. Heads up. Heads yep. up on the bench there by Torelli, making sure that they maintain possession. Possession there, because he didn't want to give it back to him. 30-second um, timeout here, I think, is what we're looking at. That's a whole lot of pinko in the student section. Yeah, it is. Folks, if you did not know about cancer, please now know that cancer exists. It's a bad thing. Yeah. Support anyone and everyone that has cancer. Congratulations to everybody who has survived it. Yep. Best wishes to anyone fighting it now. You don't fight alone. No. Uh, you know, I remember when I was a kid, my grandmother fighting lung cancer. You know, back then it was a little different, right? But yeah. now, know that you've got support. Know that there are people around. You've got resources. Yep. Just, and I would say this, don't be afraid to ask for help. Right. Because it's there. Up to the center, up to church, all the way, buddy. Up off the glass. Dolphelt had it, but ripped away. And Assumption going the other way for two. So, whoa, that was close there for Ian. Back out to Talon over to Sam. Moving the ball around really well. Trying to find that open look. Golf felt. Back over to Sam, and I thought he was going to shoot that. Man, they're handsy down there. 
29-31. Oh boy. That's four unanswered. Whoa. Yep, that's, yep. And that's one of the drawbacks to the presses. Things like that yep. now come into play. So, so a fan came out of the stands and took the two cotton balls and put them in his popcorn bag. I like it. Ian coming out of the game. Two minutes left in the third quarter here in 31-31 game. Nate. Over to Spencer. Oh, cut the cutter, cutter, cutter. Yeah, he's there. Talon three, a little bit long. Rebound assumption. Sam fighting over top of the screen. Sam is like foul there by Adolfo. I'm telling you, Sam Church is beyond his years. I mean, the way he plays defense and knows the court and he's a great shooter. I mean, he he doesn't play like a freshman. It's a reason he plays all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he plays everywhere. And rebound there by Nate. Good rebound there, Nate. You. Over to Church for three. A little bit long on that one. Rebound to Assumption. Oh, almost Spencer. Yes, great steal, Spencer. That's what happens when you stand your ground. Yep. Good steal by Spencer there. Dribble penetration out to Nate for three. Oh, off the back of the rim. Rebound, Church. Takes it great up. Great job. And draws the foul. Another rebound for Church. That's the you know fundamental stuff right there. I mean, second second chance opportunities and third chance opportunities is you know he kind of alluded to it on the girls game, kind of hurt them, but we're definitely crashing the boards hard here tonight with the boys. Sam makes the first one. So Sam up to 11 points now. And coming out is Talon, and going in is Watson. Avion. Is that right? Is that how you say it? Avion. 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 Maybe the son of Terrence and Elva Watson, like and the grandson of the one and only Spencer Wood. Yep. Okay, 33-33, minute of four left. Half. It looks like Torelli's trying to get some of the guys a little extra rest here. Survive this minute. Wow. Spencer. Take it all the way, Spence. There's nobody there to trap you. There you go. They take it till they stop. Yep. Good stuff. Move over to Spencer. About 10 second difference. Shot clock to do. 33 35. Oh, snap. And Nate. That's a big swing there, guys. We got to get a bucket here. There's a foul. That is that should bonus put him at the line. Opportunity. Get a chance here to get two back. So he will go to the line for two. Watson. Kind of a kind of a silly foul there if you Davenport. Mm -hmm. Um Kind of does two things for the Muskies. It gives them a chance to 
get some points, and he's short on the first one. And um, set up any kind of defense that we want to set up here. If we want to go after him with a press or, you know, with the last 11 seconds, mm -hmm. try to get a turnover. Um, second one up, and good there by Watson. Clock's not moving. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Front of the rim. Rebound, Church. Out to Spencer. Up ahead to Nate. Oh, oh a little late. A little late. A little late. So as we head into the fourth four. quarter, the Muskies are down 37-34. Looks like Talon's checking back in. And so it's one I, of those games that were right there. It, it is, you know, and this is something where I think that that couple minute stretch where things got a little away from us. We got a little excitable. We were a little excitable, a little a little out of control. Yep. I think is coming back to haunt us at the moment. But you know, there's still plenty of time oh, for the Muskies to be able to pull this together, maintain their composure, and finish it off. I would like to see, you know. This is a team that has uh, has the ability to shoot outside, but also bang around inside. Right. And based on you know kind of what I've seen, I, I like the idea of them going underneath. Yes. You know, uh, we haven't seen much from Goffo. No, we haven't. And I think you know if we can get, he's one that you know, oftentimes can be a catalyst for the entire team. Right. So I'd like to see if we can get Dawfelt fired up a little bit here. Down underneath and get him a couple good looks. And, and, and they don't uh, have him on the board. Yeah, they... Oh, no, they don't have him on the board. He's out there, but... Yeah, well... Uh, I have him having eight points right now. They've been a quiet eight, though. Yes, very quiet eight. There were two fouls. I mean, there was two, and he went to the line for it, you know, in the church. But he's one that you... Like Come the on, idea. Talon. Ah. And, see, and, and there you go, following your shot, Talon. Good job, buddy. Oh, not quite sure where that one is headed. Switch off there between Church and Talon. Oh. How big is that kid? He's got to be at least 6'5", doesn't he? Uh, well, from my vantage point, I would have to guess six foot infinity because I don't know that if I was standing <laughs> next to him, I could even see the top of his head. And he does miss the back end of the first one. And he does go with a two. Now, that's something to keep in the back of your head, in your back pocket is. You know, he struggled. Looks like he struggles at the line a little bit. Nice backdoor cut. That is exactly what we Really did. good. From Dolpho with the assist. Ooh. Watson gets his hand in there, tries to get the ball. Oh. Nothing, and there they do get the follow up. Thirty-nine, thirty-six. Long two for Church. Rebound, <laughs> Talon. <laughs> kind of hung so there in follow, the air. Follow your shots, yes. ladies and gentlemen. He kind of hung there in the air and just said, Look at me here, I'm gonna tip, 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 tip. I got it. That's a blocking foul on Dolpho. Is that his third? It is. I believe. Yeah. It, that'll be his third. Yeah, but we got six. You know, we're fine. He can, he's oh, fine. Yeah. He's, he's got two to give. Yeah, if, he picks, if he picks up one more right away, you might have to sit him for a minute. But... Up and does make it first. Know, somebody might want to get Coach Torelli a, a 
rule book because he has a lot of questions after every one of these fouls. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just getting his <laughs> point across. I would, I would agree. <laughs> Coach, that was absolutely not a shot at Coach Thrower. That was, that was just uh, having fun. Oh, I was having fun and making sure that uh, you know, half, half these games, well, maybe not half, but a chunk of these games, it's just understanding what the refs are thinking right. as they do it. And, and doing it politely and in a way that you can use it to right. educate Whoa. your team. And, you know. Church to church. Ooh. Long pass to Spencer. Goes and gets the ball. Nice work there inside by Spencer. And, you know, to that point, I, I, again, I love seeing Spencer go right at the hoop there. Chance for a three-point play here for Spencer. They don't have anybody in foul trouble. No. Chance for three-point play to make it 39-41. to 41. Spencer up and does convert the three-point play. Now I often forget he shoots left-handed. Yeah. Oh, good ball rotation there. That's just and that's tough. Yep. You know, you, you, part of you wants to stay home as a defender, but you also can't just let the ball go to the hoop. Right. And it's that, you know, oftentimes when you're coaching through these things on the offensive side, you're like, one more pass. Exactly. One more pass breaks down the defense, and that was just an example of it right there. little mishandle there by Church, but he takes it in, drives in, gets his own rebound, kicks it over to his brother Ian, who takes it up. No foul, and a scramble underneath. Watson picks it up and it goes off Davenport Assumption. A lot of scrambling going hard wow. out of the ball. That was, and I'm not sure, but I think uh, Sir Ian Church there was maybe a little upset that the. Oh, yeah. wait a second, there was a foul there? <laughs> okay, I mean. I, yeah, it was on Davenport too. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised. I just I didn't think they called him. Out to Spencer. Or Talon over to Spence. Trying to run a somewhat of a motion offense. It looks like Church open for three. Come on. Ah. See, and this is they're just not falling for the guys tonight, which is I mean, tough. You got four points to make up. Yep. And if the threes aren't falling, you're going to have to start banging around inside to three the old fashioned way. Right. Because right. they've shown, assumption shown, they're not afraid to foul. Right. right. Up ahead. Oh, a little bit too far there for Sam. 45-39, four minutes left. Down to four minutes left here. And here comes Dolph Elk back in. Rotation around. Long three backboard. No good. Church. Now. Into Watson. Down to three minutes left in the game here. Watson seeing a little more playing time than usual tonight. Spencer over to Sam, who thought about a three. Kicks it back out to Spencer! Oh. Oh. Again, gosh, dang, we cannot buy one of those. I mean, it's a good look. I mean, he did kick it out. It would be nice if we could do like a some sort of NIL thing, reach out to all the musky alum. And buy some of those because <laughs> right? they'd be handy to have. Foul oh. there by number two. That'll give us 
That's their third of the quarter. Full timeout here for the Knights with a 47-39 lead. It's just slowly crept. Yep. There's, you know, I, the tough thing is the ball hasn't. No. Oh. Darnell's not in uniform. That would be why mm -hmm. Adrian's getting. Yep. More yep. I did not notice that. So here we are with three minutes left in the fourth quarter. Muskie's trailing 39 to 47. We really need to stop the bleeding right here. And just any kind of points. Two, would, I don't care. I just need points right now, guys. And then get a defensive stop. Church to Spencer. Back over to Church. And to Dahlfeld. Over to Talon. Great look for three. Putting his head down. Spencer, or uh, Cade playing some really good straight up defense there. Not moving an inch. Kind of altered his shot and we get a good rebound and back down we go. A travel. No. A step on the line. No. Third block feet. underneath. That's Dolfo. Oh, no. Oh, offensive foul underneath on yeah. Dolfo. No, don't take him out. That's only four. Well, one, two, three, four, five. No, they're trying to decide. I don't, Coach. Unfortunately, I don't know that Coach Trelli was actually given information to know how many he had. Right. Oh, good job, Sam. Great defense. But by our count, that was four, correct? Yes, that's four. Inside to Ian. Back out to Spencer. Thought about three there for Talon. Church, great crossover, and he draws a foul. And that is exactly, exactly, exactly what we need. Because this team fuel is fueled by those types of points. Right. They all get pumped. Yeah, they get pumped when they hit trees. Sure, sure. We all do. Right. However, this team, from my experience watching them, when they start playing physical and they get those buckets to fall, yep. they all get an extra zip in their step. Yep. It's like I they agree. get the zoomies. I agree. Sam going to the line for a three point play, and he does come in. Make it. 45-47 with a minute 56. Here we are again. I was going to say this. Barber. This is uh, a very familiar territory. Go get your aspirin, Tylenol, whatever it is that you use to prevent heart attacks in your house. Great defense. That's off down court number two. Really good defense there by Spencer and... Uh, Watson and Church was there for the rebound but got knocked away out of bounds. Watson brings it up. Up ahead to Ian. Might have got a three! Muskies back to a one point lead. 
timeout wow. by the Knights. Okay, so let's sit here and let's talk about this. For a minute, so it, this is what makes this team dangerous, and this is what we've talked about all season, right? They're good underneath. Right. When they hit these threes, which they're more than capable of, there is not a team right. that I would not feel comfortable tossing them on the court against. Right. right? Exactly. And, 100%. You know, and again, remember, folks, these are all... Babies. It's pretty much a, a <laughs> team of diaper dandies, right? Yep, they're you know? babies. And so those clutch threes right. are going to fall more and more as, as they gain experience. experience. The game will slow down, right? Yep. And that's one thing that you see every once in a while. And I, I'd be interested to really talk to these kids and kind of talk about that, the concept of how fast does the game feel, right? right? And, I, you know, there's times when... You know, they're as quick or quicker right. than anybody on the court. But every once in a while, you see them, it, it looks like the game's moving fast on them, right? right? And then when you see them start making plays like this, you can tell the game's slowing down for them. Right. They're, they're honed in, and it's fun, oh, wow. fun, fun to watch. Nice rebound there by Sam. I want to say got the rebound. Well, Talon. Yeah. yeah. I mean, tipped it to Talon. Tipped it to Talon, so... No turnovers here. No turnovers. Timeout by Muscatine. Great job by Torelli on the sideline there. See, now this is where we need, this is where we need a Torelli dialed in. Dialed so we in. could be like, yo. What's he thinking? What's he thinking? What's he going to do here? 40, what is I, there? 20 seconds, 29 seconds between shot, shot and game clock. Ah, uh, yes. So yeah. you got almost a full two possessions yeah. there available. Up by one. So Muskies will inbound on the side here with 49 seconds left and 20 seconds left on the shot clock here for the Muskies. Kicks it out. Watson. One point lead. What? Don't get a technical here. Just Avian, yeah, Avian's got to calm down. Here. Calm down. He's got to calm down. He has got to calm down. I didn't see the travel. I know. I I grabbed it into the replay bin, so we'll take a look a little bit later. Down to 20 seconds left here. 10 on the game clock. Nice spin move. Blocked. Great block. Foul on Chur. And that could be huge in the clock. Here's a running. quick look at the block again. So they got to put some time back on the clock. Church going to the line for two. Or no, he's not going to the line. line. Yeah, that would be five. That'd be their fifth foul, wouldn't it? Is that four or five fouls? That's I, huge. Uh, I mean, that's huge if that's... Well, we wait. We'll take a quick look at that. On the travel. On the travel. Oh, wait. Whoops. Uh, we're looking at nope, the... that was the second half of the hour. Sorry, folks. Ian going to the line here. Get this. 11.9 is what we end up with on the clock. Muskies lead by one at the moment. Shoot and the two, two falls quiet. Yeah. I don't know if I don't 
I mean, let him shoot the first one, I guess, and then rebound the second one. There we go. There we go. That puts a lot of pressure on. Gives the Muskies a two-point two point lead. So Davenport takes a full timeout. I like Torelli taking this timeout. He's got no. It was one. Davenport. Davenport. I thought they said Musk team. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was Davenport. I could be wrong. Well, e either, either way, way, either way, it's a yeah. good timeout for right. for both coaches. Right. Know. On the Musky side, obviously, they can kind take of, a pause and make sure that they set up what they want to have happen. Right. Depending on whether he makes or misses. Correct. I'm assuming if he makes it, they're going to put some light pressure on just to make sure they don't roll up the ball. Right. And if he makes it, that makes it extremely... You know, I mean, a three-point lead versus a two-point well, lead. Well, I mean, it, it doesn't change a lot from the fact that, well, I mean, it does. But, I mean, right. realistically, a three is a problem. Right. Two is less of a problem. Right. right. You at least know if you make this, no matter what, you're at least going to overtime. Correct. And let, you know, we got to say here, guys, don't foul. Yeah, Whatever obviously. you do, do not foul. At least we're sitting on three team fouls, so we do have right. one to give before they end up at the line. So it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it's the last thing you really want right. to do. Yes. Huge. Huge. Like a machine. Huge. Yep. Yep. What? Oh, interesting strategy. I actually don't mind that. Yeah. So essentially what Torelli said is we're not going to let if they get by we're not going to let you go. Right. 10 seconds left. We're down to 10. Timeout was the team. So no, now we, we don't have a foul to give. No. But I, if we do get the foul actually it's, that makes no, I no, understand. It does. It. I, I, I see understand. What he's yeah, he's, yeah, he's playing. This is actually good clock. Yep. Time game management right. by Coach Torelli on the bench, right? So basically, what they're saying is, look, we're going to give you two fouls. two fouls. We've got them to give with right. our players. We've got. Right. We're going to just basically. It's almost like when they, you know, in a football game, sometimes you're better off to let them score, right. get the ball back, right? right? Yep. And it's kind of the inverse of that, right? I get the. You know, because even if you do foul them now and they go to the line, the they most make they're going to get is two, two, and then, then you're going to go to the free throw line. Right. And with this team, I'm going to assume mm -hmm. he's going to have his shooters out there. <laughs> right. Which, <laughs> realistically, yeah, a lot take, of them. take any one of the <laughs> yeah, exactly. take any one of the eight boys, and yep. you're probably going to be okay. So they're going to inbounds from the and side. And nobody's, nobody's in foul trouble. I mean, uh, right. let's see. Ian has the most at two. two. So, I mean, yeah, this is. Let him. Yeah, Let him just don't foul on the shot. Yep. Another three. And there it is. There the Muskies get win. the win over Davenport Assumption. Huge, huge win by Davenport. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. 50 to 47. Ladies and gentlemen, that they broke was, through. They, they yep. broke through. So the Muskies win 50 47. <laughs> I, I think, I'm not sure, but I think the student section's a little happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they look a little happy down there. So, you'd love to see this for the boys. Um, player of the game. I'm leaning uh, towards... Uh, I think I think I got to go Sam. Yep, I was leaning towards Sam. I think you got to uh, go Sam. He's put up 17 points. Yep. Had a couple of key blocks there at the yep. end. I, you know, I, I think game. tonight it's Sam. It is. Sam it, Church. It's Sam Church tonight. Um, 
So happy for the boys. Or or the other alternative for player of the game is uh, Brandon Welsh <laughs> as he walks by. <laughs> Brandon. Uh, um, but, yeah, super excited for the boys. They finally broke through. Um, hoping this gives them some confidence going forward. That, hey, we can beat these guys. You yep, know what I mean? Like, yeah, you just you got to get those wins under your belt. And, and uh, uh, you know, not get cocky, but just, like, right. use it to fuel and know what you've got to do. Exactly. So, quick programming note, we will be back Thursday. Thursday. And then we will be back Friday, Friday for, for two. two. And then next week, I think one got added back yeah, in yeah. as well. We're, we're, uh, I think it's Monday. I think it, it might be. Uh, we'll have to double check that because obviously we've got a lot of games to make up from that uh, Snowmageddon <laughs> thing <laughs> that we had. It hit us a couple of weeks ago. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, the Muskies take one from Davenport Assumption. Go back and watch it. It's going to be one for it's, the ages, yes. folks. It's a good one. It's going to be. You're going to look back, I think, on this team a couple years from now, and this game would be one that uh, one down. that you remember and one that you saw them potentially turn a corner. So, yeah. with that, for the Discover Muskegon Sports Network, I'm Chris Anderson for Toby Layman. Any wise words of wisdom? Um, not tonight. I don't have any. You normally yeah. do your thing with your attack, whatever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Why, can I still do that? Harbaugh is not at Michigan anymore. Yes, you can yeah, so, still. All right, do it. what the heck? Let's do it, folks. Go attack the rest of the week with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. We oh, will yeah. see you Thursday night. Yep, right here from Muscatine Fieldhouse. Have a great.